are you saying that you play you basically played dumb because it was just easier that way with the media? For play presented by Barstool Sports, we come to you live from our final work trip of the year. We're at the Abaco Club in the Bahamas. Stunning. What a work trip. I know. I was just back home um, in Cedar Rapids, and I'm just like, oh, we're traveling so much. We got our last trip of the year. I'm telling all my family this, and they're like, oh, where are you going? And I was like, the Bahamas. And they're like, oh, fuck you. Like, I was saying, like, oh, it's been such a heavy travel year, which it has been. Probably taking 80 flights, and I'm like, oh, we're finally finishing up. And they're like, where are you going? Bahamas. No one has much pity for that. I think our last three work trips were, um, like, big work trips were Dominican Republic, Florida, and the Bahamas. So we've we been got doing it right. Scottsdale. And Scottsdale, which was awesome. <laughs> we got it pretty good. I got a legitimate have a great vacay text this morning. And I was like, I couldn't really respond with that being like, it's not a vacation, it's a work trip. It didn't come from one of the bosses, Harriet? No. Okay, good. That would have sucked. That's yeah, the, the way you said it, I was like, tonight. who'd you get that from? True. That would have been like three or four years ago, I feel like. Yeah, true. Hey, have a good vacay. Enjoy And he would have tweeted, he would have quote tweeted the... The ticket of us on the plane today. Public, not public. The that, picture those are the days Will Compton was not around for. The days those where are you'd, scary days. You would get a, you'd get a text message. Hey guys, enjoy the golf course today while we're all at the office working. <laughs> Whoa! And I used to be on the other side of it with Dave, being like, "I think those guys are golfing today." I used to fucking needle them. I know you did. I had to. <laughs> Shit ain't right, dude. Dude, we would go on the Shit. radio, and I'd go on the mic. Then I'd be like, "It's so before you join these guys." Like full time, I was still on their show, which is even more yeah. insane. Yeah, he like would do that, have, and then had Two Face Frankie would come no, at night. Like, we'd have nothing to talk about, then? and I'd go on the mic. I'd be, we'd be on Sirius XM, and I'd say, "Hey, Dave, do you have any idea if Riggs, is Riggs if Riggs and Trenner are available for radio today?" He's like, "Where are they?" And he'd get a little smirk. That if that was probably TBC Sawgrass Day. Yeah, the I'm like, oh, I don't know. I think they're playing like Sawgrass Day. It's like a Tuesday at one o'clock or something. <laughs> Remember, and he goes, now. He goes Jason, call them up right now, and then it's just. Wind Remember? whipping, heavy breathing on the other side of the line. You're like, hello? We're standing in the parking lot parking in yeah. front of that behemoth of a clubhouse. And we tried. To, Jason Day had won it the last year, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, so he was like. He was there, BD. and we were like, Jason Day's here. And Dave was like, you guys are interviewing him? We're like, no, he's just here. He's just here. <laughs> so we're we just saying like, We took like Instagram <laughs> stories of him just walking around in his shirt. It's very funny of just like. Honestly, over the last couple of weeks where we've had the fire coming at us, we should have played this and just showed how fucking hard it was to get golf off the ground at this company. Possible. God, I, I just I remember Dave saying, no blogs today, Trent, oh. on radio, and I wanted to die. Oh. <laughs> Chevrolet has uh, over 1,900 certified EV dealerships, over 5,550 EV-trained technicians electric vehicles are just it that's it that's just it that's what we're doing now if you haven't realized that then you need to wake up i'm glad that you're awake and listening to this entire thing and chevy's been doing it for over 100 years in terms of cars i'm doing electric vehicles for uh over 10 years at this point they got fantastic models the silverado it's just the best golf future very uncertain oh vehicle future it's electric, baby. Whoa. Wow. I like that. I've been iconic. waiting for that since he started talking. That's good. And since it's true. you started talking. They're iconic. Since he Ooh, started doing the, the Chevy, they're iconic. <laughs> we talk a lot about the like the um, hierarchy of golf and how uh, there might be some people that are just like deciding on where it should go and what the future of it should be. And you got to think that that's, this has happened with cars, right? At some point, these fossil fuels and all this stuff and all the things that are happening in the world, they had to make a decision. And Chevy was just there at the forefront of it like it feels like to us it's in its infancy stage we say that a lot about golf and live in this podcast and uh it feels like these electric cars just came out of nowhere no they've been doing it for 10 years perfecting their craft leading the way innovating chevy you know hats off to you hats and off to you chevy that bow tie has been around for a long time we like seeing a nascar uh and we like seeing it the electric vehicles the nationwide dealership uh, with Chevy EVs is a true value to consumers because we are there for you with any electric vehicle question. Learn more at Chevy.com slash electric. Go check them out right now at Chevy.com slash electric. I saw Danny, uh, you were grinding on a blog today on the plane. Yeah, did a Monday wrap Q&A about all the stuff that's going on in world golf. What is going on in the world of golf? Oh, this is the first post-ROM podcast yeah. we've done. From yeah. what I from what I gather, it's chaos. 
Like I like the PJ tour is like they're up till three in the morning, two in the morning every night, all the board members like negotiating. There's a bunch of players who don't aren't satisfied with who's leading and there's you know, some talk that Patrick Cantley's kind of like worked himself. And then there was another I so I reported that Patrick Cantley was like calling the shots. And then there was another article that came out a little bit later that also said that Patrick Cantley had made himself into the most powerful um person at the PGA tour. So, but then that was as a guy who, by the way, is like not particularly well liked. It's it, it'd be crazy if he got himself in that position, right? Because it's not like he's not like Tiger Woods, where everyone's like, "All right, that's Tiger Woods." Like, is the John Rom deal a negotiation tactic by Live and the PIF to say if you don't make a deal with us with the PJ Tour, we're going to keep doing this? I think yeah, I think yes, I think it is a negotiation play, but it also just puts them in a really strong position if there is no deal, right? Hundred percent. Because so it. it you know, the negotiations are going on right now. They send a very clear message, a clear fuck you. We're not done. We're going to continue to take your players. You want to come make this deal. Because Yasser and Monahan are sitting down soon. Yeah, they're still negotiating. Like, they've been okay. negotiating this whole time. But, yeah, it's really, it's crazy. I mean, the framework agreement basically happens in June. And it's made by this guy, Jimmy Dunn and Ed Herlihy. They make the framework agreement with the with the Saudis. The players freak out that they did it without them knowing. They add a sixth board seat for a player to out. So there's now six board seats for players, five for independent directors. Tiger takes that board seat. So now the players are basically in charge and Dunn and Herlihy, who negotiated the first deal, are not involved in these negotiations. So they're negotiating with different people than they were negotiating with for the framework agreement. And the question at that point, also we have Bubba Watson on the show. So I know we're talking a lot of live right now, Bubba Watson sits on for the whole second half of the show, and we talk a lot of Liv and his life and his captaincy of the Range Goats and the trade Dan was kind of putting out there into the universe what everybody was thinking, which they traded Taylor Gooch, who was the best player on Liv last year, for Matt Wolf, who did not have a very strong year. Why they do that? And we talk a lot about behind the scenes and all that with Liv, with Bubba Watson. So that's coming up. Um, this whole The whole deal part of it and the negotiating part of it makes me then wonder who's actually negotiating, right? Because like Patrick Cantlay or Tiger Woods aren't actually negotiating, right? It's got to be lawyers that work with them or for them. Whereas like Hurley he and Dunn are actual negotiators. Yeah, like so they're guy- actually business deal makers for their profession, for their lives. Very, very good at it. Incredibly influential people that have done that forever. And then you've got guys that like, um, you know, you fly to wedge for a living yeah. that you're negotiating with Yasser al Ramayan and what, like, who's actually negotiating? Yeah, so there's this guy, Colin Neville, who is like representing the players in negotiations. He worked for Rain Capital. Who's the guy from Harry Potter? Oh, well, yeah. Neville Longbottom. Neville Longbottom. Longbottom. Yeah. Neville Longbottom. Sounds like a Harry um, Potter. He used to work exactly for what? Sounds yeah. like a dork. Rain, Rain right? Capital. Like dork I think he still does yeah, work for Rain Capital. Yeah, he is. That's true. Rain Capital. That's a succession thing. That's, yeah, it's not a real, not a real company. It's <laughs> not a real thing. Yeah, so it's this guy, Colin Neville. But, yeah, it's it's um, so they released a statement last night saying they're advancing negotiations with this this group called Strategic Sports Group, which is led by Fenway Sports Group. There's mm. a lot of groups involved here, which own John Henry, John Henry. They own um, the Red Sox. They also own Liverpool and the Pittsburgh Penguins mm-hmm. and a couple other sports team owners. So it seems like of the American private equity companies, they are in the best position. But you got to wonder how Yasser... that also kind of a fuck you from the tour back to PIF. Yeah, right, there's two fuck yous from each side. Three weeks before this thing's supposed to get done. I don't think the PIF, I think the PIF is concerned that they're negotiating, these people who they didn't negotiate the first deal with are now negotiating with all these American private equity companies. They're scared of being squeezed out. So they said, fuck you guys, we'll take your best player. What's the end game here? Explain it to me like I'm five. What's the end game? I hope the What end- are people trying to get out of this? The PJ Tour to not be a thing anymore? I don't think so. There's, Liv can only have, I think, what did Bubba tell us? They, they can go up to 60? Yeah. So there's more professional golfers than 60. So the PJ Tour is that's all, all that's like their own rules that they made up, right? Couldn't they just like choose? That's point? like their well, model. Or whatever. I think it I also gets saying, a little like, bit dicey with the shotgun start thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which if you're gonna, <laughs> what a hilarious thing to stand in their way. It's like a well, Monday outing. They're also, trying to figure out how many players here, they can but like, Didn't John Rom? And we gotta get to like our reactions to John Rom. But didn't John Rom say that he? Has any um, format change come from the he John Rom acquisition? He said that he recommended a few things and we'll see what happens. They had but, to have listened to him for to give him that much money. He said he hated the no yeah. cut. He hated the three rounds. Like they had to have changed something. You'd think that there'd be some change, especially with the world ranking points. Right. He's going to want world ranking points. But to, to answer your question about the end game, you know, I think the PGA Tour thought that they could fight this off and they wouldn't have to let them in the party. And I think now Liv has made it impossible 
for the PGA Tour to not let them in the party if they want to continue having the best players in the world play on their tour. Why doesn't the PGA Tour just say, okay, you win, everyone's allowed to play in our events now, and then the PGA Tour just gets the best players in the world to go play in their events? Because because th there's only so much room in the schedule, right? If there's 14 live events, so you're saying then they play all the w weeks that live is off and play in PGA Tour events, you'd, ha you'd have to condense the PGA Tour schedule big time, which might happen. And that's what I think Lonto, who I've you know kind of been – Speaking to about all this is that's what I think the rank and file, like the average PGA Tour players are worried about, is that if, a, if an American private equity company comes in, they're going to trim fat and they're going to look at, OK, are these is are these guys making money? Is this tournament making money? Do we need the Houston Open? Do we need this tournament right. or should we just double down on L.A. and double down on Bay Hill? And so there's a lot of question marks. How many players are going to be on the PGA Tour in this new company? You know, what's going to happen to the Corn Ferry Tour, which loses money? What's going to happen to the PGA Tour Latino America, which loses money, but the PGA Tour subsidizes those? If you have a, a private equity company that comes in and they want profit, yeah. it doesn't, might not make sense to have all those things. Right. You made a great point on Twitter, Dan, about how the PGA Tour... X. Sorry. On X, about formerly known as Twitter, about how the PGA Tour doesn't own or operate any of the top five biggest events in the world of golf and how vulnerable that left them. And the more I thought about that, you can really get to your own conclusion of people that have the means to do it saying, we don't fucking need you, PJ Tour. What is the point of you? All the players really want to win major championships, play in the Ryder Cup, and then the rest of the time make money. And like, yeah, they want to win some tournaments and stay sharp, but they want to do that. Tiger Woods would say forever. He peaks, tries to peak four times a year. Rory McIlroy told the, st told the story of going to Tiger's house and being like, the only trophies he had are his major championship trophies. He asked him where the other PGR Tour trophies are, and he's like, I don't know. I think my mom has a couple. Like, I don't know. And so they're really vulnerable, and especially now that they're facing, obviously, this existential crisis. Like, I... I I feel like I could see a world where the tour might not survive this. Maybe not in this current um, iteration of the tour. Like it might become, it might become, if they don't let the Saudis in, it might become like you go to your PJ tour, you cut your teeth, you went on the PJ tour, and then you try to get your live offer. I, I don't want that to happen. I want them to all to come together, to come together and have, you know, live, be part of the PJ tour. And, and that's what I thought we were getting closer to on June 6th. But there's been so much upheaval at the PJ tour since then and new guys in charge that it's thrown all the negotiations into whack. But it would be like I, the NFL not owning the Super Bowl. It's like... Yeah. Yep. I the Super Bowl isn't the Super Bowl without the regular season the playoffs. It's like you can't have these big events mean something if you don't have the lead-ups. Like you're never going to have the top 25, the top 50. You're not going to know who these guys are if you only have the big tournaments. You need to be able to have a regular season in all sports. I don't understand why like there's a side of the argument that's like acting like that doesn't need to exist. You know what I mean? No, it does, but it, there's, we're just saying it doesn't have to be the PGA Tour. Yeah. Whereas, like, the Masters tournament couldn't just become a different tournament. Like, it has to be the Masters. Yeah. And I think the PGA Tour doesn't necessarily have to be the pinnacle of professional golf week in and week out. I think they're like, you know, if they just do that, what is it, Adelaide, Australia event? Like, if that was just one of the, you know, that was the new version of, like, the Bay Hill event or something, like, that would be awesome. That's, like, in Australia. They got great fans. It's a cool event. So, it's, like, it's just – I. I guess I'm starting to see more that it's it's not like the PGA Tour has has to exist. If someone else comes along and has the funding and has the money and has, you know, all the people in place to put on events and run the events and they're going to continue to spend, the, the tour is not guaranteed to stick around. And I tweeted this and I think it's being forgotten to a degree with all the American equity companies and the PIF and all that. The current state of golf is not sustainable for the golf fan. Correct. Yeah. Having now John Rahm was really the the last like leg to fall where it's now I've got two golf tours and they're they're splitting the talent and we don't want that. I want to watch one tour with the best players in the world. I'm not even saying that it has to be the PGA Tour or it has to be live. I'm just saying that some agreement has to happen so golf fans can watch everybody play each other. And I think you you got to realize like how split it is. So of of the last since 2020, PGA Tour players have combined to win eight majors. Live guys have won seven majors. This year, Live now has two of the four reigning major champions. If you look at the 2021, so just two years ago, the Player Impact Program, which was designed to keep guys on the PGA Tour, of those 10 guys who won that money, six of them now play on Live Golf. Right. So 
you know, it, you might get lost in because it's, it's happened kind of like our a boy trip. Bubba's one of them, right? Our boy Bubba finished tenth that yeah, year. Yeah, sneaky. that's right. But it's like if it, it's been a drip. But if you you know if if we were to to say in 2020 or whenever we first started hearing rumors about this that they would have six of the top ten and they would have Bryson and Rom and DJ. I Brooks. mean, they Brooks. I mean, they have really split at the top end. Obviously, there's not the same depth, but at the top end. It's it's truly split among the best players. DJ in the world. was a big deal. Brooks was a big deal. Phil was obviously Cam Smith. Whole thing. Cam Smith was probably the biggest deal until Rom. Rom happening, something's got to happen. Something's got to change. I don't know what it's going to be, and I think that's probably a negotiation tactic by Liv and PIF, where it's like we're all right, we're going to take Rom. So now let's figure something out. Yeah, because otherwise a, you guys are fucked. Mm -hmm. That was a big dick on the table. That's yeah. the biggest one. Yeah. yeah. I, aside from Tiger and Roy, who are never ever going to go anyway, Rom was the guy. The holidays are back again, which is perfect timing uh, for a holidays. lot of reasons. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, it's that means the holiday season. That means it's time to spotlight our Whoa. favorite. Online. We do have a good. We I know I'm I'm I'm, I'm You're stepping I'm all over the ad. I'm stepping, but we have a real good whistling room here. It's good yeah, echo that room. was nice. Wow, dude. Good acoustics. You feeling that? That's awesome. You all feeling <laughs> that right now? I'm feeling it. That's good. It's all a right. holiday season. It is. <laughs> uh, it is time to spotlight our favorite online shopping destination for all things golf. That's G4. Their new holiday collection includes plenty of, of items for <laughs> life on or off the course. Sweaters, beanies, polos, and that's just the stuff you can wear. There's driver head covers, a cashmere blanket, a bottle opener since it's legit holiday party season. They also have every type of shoe you can ask for, from the true traditionalist to the cool modern player. There's standout styles for any vibe you are seeking. Give them a visit because gift giving is easy when you know where to look. Check out g4.com slash barstool for 10% off your first order. That's g4.com slash barstool for 10% off. Yeah, Rom's got juice, man. Like, oh. He's gonna make people watch those. Bro, he's up there wearing the leather, uh, the Letterman jacket. There's just like just, nothing to say bad. I can't about believe he had the Letterman jacket on. Yeah. How did Max Homa know about that on Twitter? Max Homa was, was like, I, "Huh? I think it was a prediction. It was no. a joke. I feel like he must have sent him a Snapchat. He or something. knew about it. Yeah, I don't know. Max Homa at, in the beginning of the day goes, "Imagine John Rom goes on TV tonight wearing a live Letterman jacket, announcing that he's on live, and then that just because is the is the live Letterman jacket the thing." No, I, don't I feel think like people so. have worn it. Haven't other people I, worn it? I don't know. I don't know. I, just, I don't know either. But I it you gotta think Max and him are buddies, right? Scottsdale guys. I think Probably. so, but but that yeah. What would he have sent him? Like like a Snapchat or something? I thought it was just a joke, and then it ended up being true. What that showed me, and I could be completely wrong. He may have just guessed this. So good on you, Max, if you did that. But <laughs> I just think this Rom thing is going to be the the bridge to live oh. that none of the PGA Tour wanted. Like, well, now they're saying fee now, and now they're yeah. saying everybody. Well, also, you heard if Rory, Rom goes, it, yeah, they all go at this point. And you heard Rory yeah. say like, "Oh, we got to change rules for the Ryder Cup." Yep. Rom was a, a a total dynamic. He's changer. everything, man. Yeah, everything. Reigning everything. Masters champion. 29 years old everyone likes him he's if you had told me this a year ago i would have thought this was just as shocking as like hearing like rory went over there like rom just going to i think it's right up there stunning i mean when we had him on the show and you alluded to some quotes that he had about live and how mm -hmm. not that into it and now he's got his quote saying you know kind of saying what everyone has said he is a little bit more forward about the money part which everybody is now when they go over to live but yeah, he was against it i he was firmly against it and now he's there yeah, so he had, i mean he had been pretty pretty critical of yeah. live in terms of the format uh he had been over explanatory about how he doesn't play golf for money about how he could retire i mean this is a year ago or whatever over the last year he could say he could retire right now and not need any more money and not have to play golf ever again because we're so financially stable and then to just clearly go to live for the money look i get it we all get it everybody gets it 300 400 500 600 however many hundreds of millions of dollars it is we all kind of agreed, I think, a week ago. Like, you should take that we at did, this point. Yeah. Like, the tour has come around. No matter how you feel about sports washing, like, if it's worked or whatever, it's it's pretty much over at this point. Nobody's even really ridiculing them for joining the Saudis. They're kind of like, yeah. You, the even tour, Rory just was like, I'll miss him. Also, was the June, what was it, June 6th? That the, the Like, ever since June 6th, when the PGA Tour, who was basically your North Star and all of this ethical yeah. stuff, Said we're gonna do a deal and World sat next to Yasser. You're like, well, fuck, I gotta go now. Like, I gotta go now. 
And so, of course, he went. But he still does, you know, like I, I said, I love John Rahm. I think he has, honestly, in the last year become my favorite, like, voice in golf. And he's still a hypocrite in a lot of ways. I mean, a lot of things that he said, he did the opposite of. And so if those quotes weren't out there, I think all of it would be fine. But like when you were that critical, when you said you don't play golf for money and you, he, he literally said like, you could give me 400 million like tomorrow. That's not going to change my life. And then he took 400 and million. Like, and they were like, all right, how about five? <laughs> and he's like, done. Yeah, I think right. he's probably being advised that you take this deal. Yep. They're going to come together. You're eventually going to be playing in the same tournaments, 100%. and you have five hundred million dollars. Absolutely, that has to be his angle, and that's that's where if I'm, you know, JT or you know Spieth or Hideki, who didn't take the deal, that's that's where you get to be like, shit, what did I play this wrong? Because I think I think that's what Rom is. I think that's his calculus. Has to be. It's a bit of a mess on the PJ Tour side. It's a bit on the mess on the Live side. I'm going to go where the money is definite right now. I'm going to sign this contract. Honestly, if you're a Spieth or a JT. You taking a live deal right now, honestly, probably pushes it more towards a deal. You know yeah. what I mean? So you could sell it as like, I'm actually being a good guy here. You could if you wanted I'm to. I'm saving be, the PGA Being tour. like, yeah. listen, they're not getting this deal done because there's all these equity companies dealing with it. If a couple more of us go, the PGA Tour is going to get even more desperate than they are right now. And they're going to come to an agreement and we're all going to be playing the same tour in six months. So let's all take a $300 million. I hope so, man. Because I, I do think it's crossed the point where people are just like annoyed and sick of it. Like the division, you know... I, I think the longer, like you said, it's not sustainable. I God, do, people just want to watch the best players in the world play against. I each other. do think it's been "quote unquote" fun for people who paid the PJ Tour to watch guys jump over. But I do think the ROM one made everybody be like, "All right, now we're getting crazy. Like, let's everybody play together." Well, it's stupid. The PJ Tour too, in professional golf, kind of in general, but was years ago before the live threat already in all of our minds kind of in trouble like it's not that riveting of a product week in and week out they play far too many events yeah there's no off season that allows the hunger for golf coverage to come back and there to be off season chatter they kind of just dribble on over and over and over again and like we kind of talk about this with Bubba but like the best players in the world don't all play in the same event almost ever outside of the Masters, even before Liv existed. Like, even if you go to Bay Hill or you go to Riviera, there's plenty of guys in the top 20 that don't play in that on any given event. And, yeah. like, so it, it is not a product that was untouchable like the NFL or whatever that week in and week out. It was fantastic. It was a lot of times a snooze fest. <laughs> you had to be a hardcore follower. And even when you are, you bitch about the coverage because it stinks. And you're, in, you're it's, you have to be a hardcore follower. It's a nonprofit organization. They don't own the events and they don't own the five most important events. So they were a uniquely vulnerable <sighs> dude league. I would say overall PJ tour live golf as a sport. It's not popular enough for us to be splitting the talent. Right. Right. You can't do that. It's not a sport where there's enough talent where it's like, oh, wherever people go, people are going to be watching. We need one central thing that people are watching. That's the golf audience. It's not big enough to split it like this. 100%. Unless it be, then we become tennis where no one gives a shit except for four weeks a year. See, that's what you. That's yeah. bad. That's bad for business. It's we don't very want that. Bad. We definitely don't want that. We do not want that. Yes. No sport, the people in this room do not want that. No sport can so. survive. Splitting, no, certainly, and like, certainly not football. Golf. Hasn't you know, like they can't do it. The XFL is supposed to have this huge right. comeback, and the CFL and all. It's and like golf is on the fake. lower end of that. Yeah, way lower. It's bad right now. It's got to be nearing the end. It's right? bad on what, like whatever you like. Yeah, I guess whatever side you fall on, right? Right. I'm saying as if you're just a golf fan, it's bad right now. It you was could fun. also say like six hundred million. How much? How much was in the money? Was it six hundred million? Yeah, I don't think it's clear how much. A lot of it's built into like future team value, but I, I he definitely got a check in nine. You could figures. argue that like guys like signing Otani type deals in golf is actually good for golf. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's good for them. It's good for them, but it's just like the sport is just generating well, worldwide well, news buzz. Like there's no way that's a like too much of a negative. I'm actually I agree with you, but if that money, we need that money to be everywhere. We yeah. need that money. Because that money is like, that's not, it's generating money, but that money's not coming from golf. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but to Frankie's point, it is, it could be taken as a good thing that the Saudis, no matter how you kind of shake it down, are saying with their checkbook that they believe John Rahm is worth 
three hundred million. If they are sport washing and they're using million. golf to do it, obviously they see a value in the sport. Right. Well, yeah, they're in all. They're in every ways. sport now. They see a value in the sport, and it was possible in this sport. Right. If I'm looking at both sides of it, and I'm saying number one, oh, I'm going to be, I'm. A, they're not sport washing, and they actually care about the game. They're going to grow the game. Greg Norris has been wishing for this for 20, 30 years to own his own fucking league and all this stuff. Is he still in the mix, by the way? I mean, oh, yeah. oh, dude, photos. He was Greg front and Norman center with all the pictures. I saw pictures the pictures. Hilarious. I saw the pictures, but is he? He wasn't like part of bringing him over. I like, mean, he's still the commissioner yeah, of the league. He is like an all-time villain character now. The way dude, he, looks. he was. His almost, photos he, are I, incredible. I thought he was gonna rub down Rom in those. pictures. He is Doctor Evil. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Re- I was reading a, uh, a Tiger book by Michael Bamberger, yeah. and I don't underestimate the personal rivalry between Tiger Woods and Greg Norman. Tiger hates Greg Norman. There's a story of they live. In the same place, they both moved to Jupiter Island midway through career. Norman builds medalist. Tiger moves to medalist. He writes this story about they were sitting next to each other at a stoplight for four minutes, and Tiger just refused to look him in the eye. And then there's another story where he, <laughs> where he, remember he tried to write Tiger a note congratulating yeah. him on winning the Masters, and like Tiger wouldn't receive it. Yeah. So and and Tiger said last year, oh, if, as soon as Greg's gone, you know, we maybe can be able to make a deal. So. Tiger is fired up to try and sort of win this battle. I think a lot of it. Why does he hate him so much? <laughs> Like really hate him so much. It is funny. There's so it's a good much question. There's so much at play here, and it probably comes down to shit like that, where it's like yeah. there's all these countries involved, there's all these people involved, there's all this <coughs> money involved, and it's just like one guy hates another guy. Yeah, it's like that's like that's Game it. of Thrones, exactly. where there's these wars happening. We don't know why they're happening, but it's just because one guy has a vendetta against. I mean, Tiger's guy. legacy is tied up in the PGA Tour. 82 wins. That's like a, that's a big part of it. Well, that was I wasn't that part of Rom's thing before all this, where he mm-hmm. was like. Yeah, I wanna I wanna play on the on the, the tour that Tiger Woods won all these things on, and then I mean I'm probably putting words in his mouth, but that's a big part. Of, that's like a legacy that, conversation. Wasn't that far off that right? Now I, you know the way we laid it out earlier, where it's like, hey, here's the way it's gonna go. These things are gonna come together. People are gonna have a pathway. People are gonna be able to play in PGA Tour events and live events, and you can also put 500 million in the bank. Like from a rational standpoint, you have you, you just have to take that. They got There's got to be a deal. Just somebody make a deal. Make us a deal. Think there's going to be a sure, deal? Sure, give us a deal. I'll take a deal right now. Right. The the media scrutiny is over, and we are the media. We'll be the, so we'll, we'll be the ROM. Uh, like, I'll follow ROM around the country, wherever I got to go. I will say, I think 2024, we're going to see ourselves at a live event for the first time. Oh, yeah. I would for think sure. so. I want to I want to check out the first one. I texted you that. Yeah, I want to yeah. see, see what's going on. 100%. It's Every, like a, the, the, we're through the, the door. The league is still in its infancy stage. That's the craziest part. I'm sure the PGA Tour in year two and three was a shit show. Dude, this conversation right? with in Bubba terms- about this stuff is so fascinating because he talks a lot about how, and Dan asked him a great question about, in the future, is this going to basically fuse into more of like a team event? And he's like, yes, absolutely. He's like, the individual side of it is a big focus right away. But going forward, he's like, the purses and everything will just be divvied up by like team finish. Yeah, And it's a really interesting dynamic with how much they're actually focused on the team and the future of live and how, like you just said, they're in their infancy and they've already gotten to the point they've gotten to like, they ain't fucking going anywhere. It feels like go listen to our show from two years ago and see if we're talking about them having the no type of way. caliber players are having yeah. and making the ways they're having. We're like, this is a joke. This place, this, this is never going to get anywhere. And they've just, I mean, how long has it actually been since they created live golf? And the fact that they have this right now, you're talking what about was all that. The, it was that players championship was probably feels 2020. like 2020. No, it was, it was Riviera when the f- film that, yeah, it was 2022. It was last year. It was I mean, 2022. 2022 Riviera. was their first event. Yeah, that's when that's when Rory said dead in the water. That yeah, was the players. players right? Yeah, that, no, was, that was at Riviera. It was twenty twenty two. You know, like whenever you have something new, you're kind of like feeling out like what works and what doesn't. Like I said, I'm sure if you went back to the beginning stage of the PGA Tour, there were things that they liked, there were things yeah. that they didn't like. There were tournaments that worked, there were tournament, tournaments that didn't. There were you know formats that worked for certain players leading up into whatever into what it is today. I just think, uh, yeah, I think they have the ability to change it as it goes along and seeing what works and what doesn't work. It's wild, man. You just can't ignore it at this point. And it's, uh, if you have an yeah. unlimited budget, you just have a path. Oh, to the Saudis picked the right sport, man. But what happens if people just they don't wanna... watch? What? What happens if people don't watch? If they keep doing this, you're going to have no option but to watch. I'm, I don't know if that's true. Sports, really? have, sports have gotten less popular, you know. They've made well, that's what I'm saying about the split. You're, I'm talking split yeah. talent. That's bad. Like you know, they, they live gets like JT Spieth and like they just keep going. You're just gonna end up watching. Oh yeah, them. If it flips all the way. So but I mean, still we think will. We're, but like, what if the, what if it doesn't catch with the general public? What if it's what if people just don't like it? 
and this has been my argument about live and this is why i've been called the live guy from the beginning which is annoying but like at some point they have people there and it might not all be sport watching they have people that think it's going to be the future of golf they For have sure. legitimate no, business people that are like this team shit is gonna work like not enough people are watching the golf that they're trying to stop you know what i'm saying yeah, i do know what you're like saying they're saying that. like but we saw golf to be like they're gonna watch this new golf but like I think the data was showing them that like old golf wasn't working to like the standards that they think it could get to. No, there's they, there are definitely people who think believe in the business plan and all that, but there's also a chance that it doesn't work out. Like you're saying, like people aren't watching sports anymore. They're not watching like regu- like golf as it is right now. So like, you, but I would say even the lowest they might rated need PGA a change tour, up. The lowest rated PJ Tour event smashes lit because they're a year in. They don't even have a TV sponsor because everyone was like, oh, like. But people know what it is. People, it's, not, it's, it's got do, the most publicity like they, of, of any league in the last two years. But there's just been this, like, the, the political turn on it and the nature behind, like, what they stand for and what they are has, I think, really hurt them in terms of being able to, to catch eyeballs. I actually think a big part of it is simple. And people just don't change. People don't change their viewing habits. If they're like, that's not true with like anything ever. If they watch, if they're like, yeah, I got to watch the CW or I got to watch it on YouTube. I don't know if you're that you're going to get an audience that goes to that. It doesn't seem like they're going. That's like saying like, like when people went from watching like black and white TV to then like now YouTube, like that they were never going to change. Like everything changes. There's, you know what I'm saying? Like no. uh, people have changed their, you, you said like no one's going to change like what they I think it's doing. more d- difficult than you think. I think it's more to get I, people to like change how they watch sports. Yeah. I would say that's like not true. Every single sports league now does streaming. Would you have said that 15 years ago? No, but they're fundamentally changing the product. Right. I know, it, but would you have said that uh, you were going to have to watch Thursday Night Football on Amazon Prime five years ago? Or would no, you say, but you're going to say like all the dads watching football, they have still to watch the NFL, it on Fox. It's still an NFL game with yeah, the NFL looks the same. implications and everything's the same. I think the difference in. It's still golf. It's like, But for me, I think there is a certain element of. There's not a, beach there, balls. There was a prestige to. <laughs> Playing on the PGA Tour, winning on the PGA Tour, having Jim Nance call your final nine holes, like, that is a thing that when you tune in, you're like, this matters. This is life-changing for this guy and whatever. You just kind of know PGA Tour, Jack Nichols, Arnold Palmer, Tiger Woods, Greg Norman, like, all those things were just in your head. And I think live to the like that jump over and you turn it on and it's a little bit like the leaderboard job, and, and I think like clearly the numbers say so far. I don't think it's stuck with people. Like I, yeah, in the same way. It's with certainly a mess. Tour. And Rom kind of admitted that when he signed. He was like, "We gotta, I gotta take my advice on some of this shit because it's not working." It is a mess for sure. But I, I just think that that's such a, that's such a, in such a short time, what they've been able to accomplish. I don't think that like the format and trying to figure out. These TV deals, all it's gonna, it's all gonna come in time. What do you mean what Ten. they've been able to accomplish just by having the right? I would say the thing that they've guys? been able to accomplish hasn't is only been spending money getting players, and that has not translated to views, which is the only part that you really need. I think that's the accomplishment that they wanted, though. That that's the accomplishment to sign people. That's validating f- like the league, right? To, to sign people, I mean, but it's sure. money, enough money, and they're gonna come over. But yeah, you know? that's like that's it's, not it's, to get people. That doesn't watch, matter how they get them. Just no, no, validating the league is like the end game. It Getting matter. people and fucking with the PJ Tour is definitely validation yeah. on, in one regard. But to get viewers, it doesn't seem to have gone that way yet. Yeah, I just think that like it all is a part of the steps, is it not? Like you start with fucking Bubba Watson, you end up with John Rahm. It's like it's a it's a. I, I'll be very curious to see the viewers this year for sure. Right. But I think you had Phil, you got DJ, you got Brooks. You, you don't have nobody. They were on YouTube. They were they were like blacklisted from being able to be on a TV network. They like they're on CW now. Those le- those ratings were low. It's not CBS on Sunday at two at two o'clock. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That people know, and it's they're like I'm gonna watch it on CBS. I really the viewing habits of people I think are hard to change. Yeah. And that's also like like CBS wants that. CBS wants the PJ tour, right? Like that's. So when you're like, well, they're not on there yet, it's like, well, yeah, that's because the networks also have decided that like nobody cares but, about But this. I guess my whole point is that the more they get the John Roms, the more that CBS is just going to want them and, or if a streaming platform will want them and the product's better, people are just going to go and change. Well, that's the that. question. That's the product the question. being better is the question. That's the question. Is the product better? Are golf fans going to enjoy this team first because they keep getting the best players it will in fact be better just by the best players. I don't players. think that no? the difference think so? in, I don't think John Rom being, you know, 
half a shot or whatever better than like i don't think that's enough to overcome if people don't like the product if people i guess better is the wrong word i'm talking names no i understand but i'm like and get if, the best if, names if you've got tiger woods or no you're not tiger that's not a good example if you've got four very famous golfers and they're playing you know a format that people don't like versus a tournament that people do like i don't think that the the name recognition is enough to overcome yeah. if people view the league in a negative light because they don't like it it's so different it's not just a different golf league. It is completely different. The product is completely different. Yeah, time we'll will see. tell. Time will tell. I mean, you yeah. could be right. Like I, you know, we're just no. We I, I just like sometimes, like yeah. I, I they're not they're not doing it for no reason. I, I, I mean, Definitely. some people might think so, but I just it's like you hear they have a they have some sort of a plan. For sure, there's they have to. consultants who gave it all. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. It's like this Otani news. They signed for seven hundred million. I'm like, you don't think that really smart people sat around a boardroom and talked about this for like months, being like, if we give this guy seven hundred million dollars, we will then in turn make billions off of it because of who he is and what we can market. Like, they there's a reason why everyone, all these guys, do something. It's not just like they're not throwing pixie dust at things. At some point, I really do think that they they think they're gonna try and change the game. For sure, they do. For sure. It's just a question. It's just of crazy that they right. got John Rahm to hop on that board. Like that's a pretty oh, yeah. big fucking like. That's a pretty big boost. Yeah, yeah. huge, huge. John Rahm, dude. We'll just. I'm again. I, like I said, I'd be very curious to see if they can get people to watch it. Yeah, and because at a certain point, if and it is smart people, it's an investment. At a certain point, they're gonna want to see some sort of return on viewership. And if they don't care about that, then they're getting they're spending that money for another reason. And that's yeah. been the whole thing the whole time. Do you think there's a chance golf, even before Live, was like a fraudulent business to a degree? I think it gets a lot of benefit from every CEO in America being like obsessed with golf. Yeah. Which I think it gets away with some <laughs> things that other sports maybe don't. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. Whereas I think like with the with the Otani deal and with the NFL, it's like very clearly that money just delivers for the most part. Like it's there. Right. The money's there for a reason. These players put ass in the seats, whatever. I just don't I've I'm not convinced in golf though. Like the CEOs are like, I get to play in the Pro Am now. <laughs> Dude, so we'll pay <laughs> we'll pay for a twenty five million dollar purse right. so that we could continue to play in the Pro Well 100%. we were just talking about where it's like all this stuff and it comes down to like Tiger hating Greg Norman. Yeah. A lot of these sponsorships are like this guy, this CEO is a golf perv and he likes hanging out with this guy at a couple corporate days and, right. and they do the hospitality thing. They buy out the huge tent yeah. on eighteen, they entertain clients. That that's part of their twenty million dollar package that goes into the purse and goes into the event and all that and it's like a lot of inflated like is this real is all of this real now Rom's getting five hundred million dollars and it's like what are we what are we actually yeah. fucking doing is here? there a golf bubble that's just gonna burst and people are gonna be like nobody actually cares about this sport that's right like, what? it definitely doesn't have the I saw some stat that I think like volleyball has more global viewers than golf <laughs> so it's saying like, you can't be split in the that's what I was uh -oh. like it's all been the Saudis have thrown everything out of whack as far as what over, golfers value it's a big enough sport to make like world headline news you know what i'm saying in like this it, context for sure yeah tiger woods was the biggest celebrity the, the saudis planet. went and bought the volleyball league it wouldn't even cross our minds or our desk i'd be kind of fired up about that i think yeah live volleyball our guy our, guy nate, volleyball. The, our, the, our guy nate the great might be fired up about that but <laughs> yeah. it's nobody else <laughs> Live volleyball, the volleyball, just one V. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Uh, I, yeah, crazy. Do you think that um, because for like a hundred years, playing golf and watching and consuming golf was always the same format, where you just like turned on the big tournaments on the PGA Tour, you you watched the majors, you went out and you played uh, the old crusty country club white man golf for the hundred years, and now all of a sudden, a uh, like complete. One or I was gonna say a one eighty, a complete one eighty comes in in the game of golf. YouTube golf starts coming around. All these groups we're here right now at Abaco with good good, and it's just like that. All of these viewers like to watch different versions of the game now that they never even was even possible five years ago, let alone fucking forty or fifty years. And that's what Live is seeing. That like just the introduction of a different style of the game clearly is getting more eyeballs than the standard version of the game. Well, it's just a fact, right? So like. Maybe they're seeing that the professional level has to cater more towards that style of golf. Something a little bit more flashy, colorful, 
different than the, the standard golf that we can't even sit here and see if it works. We're just talking about that guys are putting money into it because they want to play in the pro am. It's like that might not be a successful venture for the next 100, 200 years if you're actually trying to come up with a business plan. Well, we you said, we've said on the show that uh, you live should have just started a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> Would have made more sense. But it's just the idea that it needs to be different. I'm I know sure, you like, mean. Like, yeah, the, I mean, like if we're thinking that golf has these like hidden figures that sip, and I, I watch Loki, I love Loki on Disney Plus, but like there's these like higher <laughs> beings that, plug there. that, that on Disney Plus. Said, I don't know viewers. Tom Hiddleston, I think is his name. Hiddleston. He's, Hiddleston. Yep. Amazing actor. It's a great show. Uh, Owen Wilson's so good. In I, it. I think what you're saying, though, I think we There's are. There's these like higher going. beings that are like deciding the future of golf, right? Like the, the he who remains or something. They have to be seeing that golf needs to change somehow, some way. I yeah, would say they, that I, we're proof. Because and it actually all is changing. are proof that there is a market for stuff that's not just four rounds. You know, the best players in the world playing. Like that's not the only way to get viewers. And we are still, we, we talk about the time, right? And like five years seems like in our world, like a long time. We've been doing this for like five to seven years at this point, right? It's 2017, says on your head, Barcelona Golf. That's really nothing in terms of the history of golf. And we've seen such a change in the sport since 2017, 2018. They might be saying like, what's, what is this sport going to look like in 20 years when all these people that love this shit, this change right now in 2024, 2023, what's, what is the profession? What does their professional golf look like? Cause I know it's going to be different than my grandfather's. And yeah. I know it's gonna be different than my dad's yeah, you, professional I mean, golf. And yeah. they, like it's PJ tour wasn't willing to change, I guess. Right. Like, so someone needed to come around yeah, and I try mean, something the, new. The average PJ tour viewer is 64 years old. That's insane. Yeah. It's the and highest, like, it's and the we're highest arguing on behalf league. of those be like that. That's never going to work. That's not a business model. Yeah. So the, well, that's what live is. That's yeah, like, I, I mean, understand what live is trying to do. It's just the people that are behind it suck. That's always just been the issue. Yeah. So like if you can, if you and can erase is, that part of your, of, of your brain, but there is an argument for history. Like there's there always is. an argument for history and the gold standard, but it's not like working, right? Yeah. But it's, but you could argue that live isn't working in yeah. terms of viewers. Like people aren't watching it. No, but is, it doesn't have to work right now. Right? Like I aren't, they would prefer that. They would, but like if they're, my. I That's think, why they were able to do this. We're though, talking because about the they future. Could, they could get through the lean years because they have so much money. Yeah, yeah. It's the future. It's like what you want to get it to. It's like what your vision is and like where you're trying to get it to. They're in year two but, of this thing. I don't think it's supposed to be at the pinnacle of PGA Tour, which has been around for however many years. No, but I would also say that like the you know we talk, we're talking a lot about like what is professional golf? Is it going to change a lot? Like professional golf really is about five events of the year, and I don't think those yeah. are changing. I don't yeah. think the Masters is going to change to a team format. Yeah. I don't think, you know, like I still think those are going to be, you tune in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 72 holes, who has the lowest score. And so I don't know that you can really change it, even if you change it. Like they're still going to have to do those four tournaments a year. Yeah. How did the PGA Tour fumble the bag so hard and not like make, making some sort of reality where they have a major? Yeah, yeah, that's stunning. They tried to force it with us with the with the sawgrass. They've been like, doing that forever. Like the fact that they are, and people say, "Oh, the PGA, the PGA." They don't understand the PGA Tour and the PGA of America are separate things too. So they don't even own the PGA Championship. It's like, how I know. how do they not own a major? They don't have one. It does feel like golf is losing its center. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, yeah. PGA Tour has always been like, all right, there's the PGA Tour, and then there's the majors, and now there's this whole other world that you're talking about, where it's whether it's YouTube golf or it's live. Everything feels a little bit more destabilized. And the PJ Tour, you said it earlier in the show, where it was like, there's a world where it's not around or certainly not in the certain the current format that it's in. So it's it's a weird time in golf where the thing, the North Star that everybody looked at for decades is now on the map. Yeah, it's just the times we're living in. Like something's just weird with golf. But I also don't want it to get fully destabilized where and I, maybe I sound in 30 years, I'll sound old where it's like, I still want tournaments. Yeah. Like 82 wins matters. Like, yeah. is it just going to become Mario golf and you know, it's going to be wacky and, and yeah. no, but I, unfortunately, I can't have it go all that way. Golf's the only sport where that's like a reality. Like there's no world um, in our day and age right now where people are watching different versions of football. They're not going on YouTube and watching a bunch of guys getting together and playing a football game. They're not going like, you know, backyard baseball isn't taking off where yeah. there's like these groups that have millions and millions of subscribers and merchandise is being sold. And they're watching these guys play backyard baseball. Baseball will always be king because you play it inside Yankee Stadium and that's where you go and watch it. And the history is always going to be its thing. For sure. Golf is just a sport where I don't know how it happened and I don't know why it happened, but it's because everyone can play it. We've it's just, just right. Like we've play. just like, it's lost. It's, 
pedigree on the professional level in some sense where like people are going to watch way more versions of it than just the PGA tour. That's just like, and that's, that's, that sucks for the PGA tour. They didn't probably see that coming. That fucking good. Good was going to have a, an episode that would probably do nine times uh, the viewership of their Thursday through Sunday tournament on a regular. But there, fucking I Wells do think Fargo there is event. still a place for it. Like if there is, if, but they, just, if all these, if the talent ooh. pools back into one thing, I think tournaments are going to be what they were. There is, and they're always, like the majors are always going to put asses in the seats. I'm just saying, like, you have to just keep looking down the line. These guys are trying to build these businesses, not for for the next year, like for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Like something's got to give at some point. This is the landscape's changing Fast. in golf more than any other sport, and I, it's just it's interesting to think about. Like, you know, there's no fucking like three on three hockey league in YouTube that like you'd rather go watch that than all of a sudden like, you know all this, these hockey leagues on YouTube are starting to get a bunch of traction. Then a fucking Saudi league comes in. All of a sudden they're grabbing Sidney Crosby. Like it's just golf is just that type of sport because everyone can play it. That's the reason. What, it is funny. Like what we're kind of talking about is a microcosm of what we have been going through the last couple months at Barstool where it's like, it's every, something everybody can do. So everybody. Oh does yeah, it. exactly. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We are the PJ tour of Barstool sports. And there's all these <laughs> different, feel good now. <laughs> there's all these different brands that just golf. pop up and like, Oh, we could do oh, a different we need spin a big on deal. it. And we're yeah. like, wow, we're the fucking first ones to do it. Yeah. I'm like, well, look, everyone likes to watch these guys do it too. Everyone likes to watch these. And we're like, all right, we just got to fucking live with that. Yeah. We just don't have a Tiger Woods fighting for us in the back end. Well, that's going to be a big part of it too is when, I mean, that's going to be a major factor when Tiger Woods is playing in PGA Tour events versus, you know. Yeah, but again, the his, the, the future of this thing, it's like you're going to back it all. On Tiger, and I don't want to talk bad about Tiger Woods, but at some point it's not going to I have a theory that, on forever. I have a theory that one of the reasons he said I'm going to play once a month was to, like, give the tour some, like, backing. Like, I'm going to play Genesis. I'm going to play I don't, Let players. me tell you something, though. Like, hitching your wagon to a guy that's got no, obviously. a couple of years left is just that's I'm not dying. saying it's the only wagon but right now it's a big it's yeah. a big chip it's a big chip yeah. to be able to put out there because any event that he plays in again the the live events are getting almost no rating any event that Tiger plays in is gonna just go crazy imagine if he wins like and the PJ Tour becomes hot again you know he gets right. his 83rd and yeah like, think about how hot the PJ Tour was John at the Rob end of 2018 now, though, They've got John Rahm now. I know. He's not Tiger Tiger's going to... I know, but Tiger's going to win an event without John Rahm, Dustin Johnson, Cam Smith, Brooks and That's that. I think that's my ultimate side. That's my yeah. ultimate angle. What are we I can't have about? these two tours. I just... I, I'm a simple sports viewer fan. I don't want to watch CBS. And then I got to go find Liv on the CW. Just put all these guys in one place, please. Yeah, I know you're saying the too. schedule part's going to be impossible, but like, I just feel like the PJ Tour kind of wins in their own right if they just let these guys back and play well they got to create some sort of combined schedule where i think it should be like the pj tour has its signature big events that have history and then live has like its team thing and yeah. you know just do you it you get and and you they lost. coexist just fucking do it even brandle even brandle said, lost, even sure. brandle said he get an interview with sports illustrator where he's like at this point the pj tour has to make a deal the saudis win golf is he said golf has been dirtied which is his opinion but you know, even people who are so staunchly PGA Tour hold the line, hold the line. And, I, you know, I'm of this belief now where it's like, I just want there to be a deal because I just want golf to continue. You to have to be dull to not see what's happening. Yeah. To not realize a deal has to happen for golf to just go forward and be the way that it sort of was I'm before. so tired with how, like, mean and political everything is, too. Like, it's just nasty Crazy. out there. Right, I'm, welcome look, to I'm rooting for golf to win in the end. Yeah. Whatever that ends up being. I just want it to be everyone's all in on something. You know what I'm saying? And I think people would be all in if they came together and they said, we're going to do these big events and these guys are going to play in it. We're going to have live. I love do that. Team thing. I like, that seems like a fun season of golf to me. Is yeah. If you have the players, you have these big events PJ Tour has. You have Riviera, the ones that we get up for. And then you also have this team aspect that everyone's all in on. And then they actually perfect the format of the team play. Where they're actually playing as a team because it stinks right, right now. Right now, it does stink. It stinks. Yeah. It does. It's really? so bad. Yeah, when they played in Miami that a year ago together, yeah, as like teams, and they were having team match matchups. Play. Dude, match, match play. Do, play. Do alternate it was awesome. shots. Do it was like so fun. Make right. it the Ryder Cup every fucking week. Right, just you can't have it. teams. You can't just have guys be on a team and still be playing like independently. And just add up the scores at the end. It should right. be. <laughs> it should be a team. There should be points at the end of it. Match play. You got a point. It should be. That's high school golf. You go out there with your partner and you're going to try and grab a point for your team and everyone's waiting for you on the 18th. That green. was high school golf for you guys? It wasn't yeah. stroke play? No, it was like you had to get points. Oh, ours was just stroke play. That sounds more fun. 
Yeah. Way more fun. So you fun. could win. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you could have, like, you could even just have pretty standard, like, week-to-week matchups. Yeah. You know, like, like in every other sport. Like if you have a team against another team on, like, the weekend, that's that's just your big match. That's that's what you have that week. Yeah. We just got to have all the talent in the same pool again. It's too crazy now. Thing is, who do you think is more desiring that outcome? PGA Liv Tour. or PGA Tour? PGA Tour. Right. So if Liv knows They're, that, they might be less likely to want to do that deal. Being like, but I think they still need the PGA Tour for for again. If we look at what they wanted to do, you know, initially, legitimacy, a seat at the table. I, I still I think they've put themselves in an incredible position of strength, but I don't think they want to go at this by themselves forever. Yeah, it, the seat at the table is a big part of it, and. The PGA Tour, I think, wants this deal more, and you can get more out of them than if you're PIF or Live or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You can have them both. They're both your. They're your puppets now. So Yasser won. He just he's just victorious. No, my money wins. wasn't match play. It was stroke play. But if you beat the guy, you got a point for your team. <laughs> so okay, got it. So you know it wasn't about they didn't gotcha. add up all the scores. They no, just, okay. Actually, I think that was like the tiebreaker, possibly. Like if there was like if it was That's six to one. six at the end. The lowest score. So if you shot 78, the other guy shot 80. There was you nine whole matches, yeah. Okay, so if you shot whatever. 40. 39, 40, and the other guy shot 40, I think we got a point. And then you would win like 7, 3 or whatever. But right. if he shot 50, you still only got one point. I'm pretty sure, yeah. And yeah. then like the team the team score had something to do with it also. It may have been like another point or something. Another point if you had the – yeah, because you could actually – you could lose the matches, I'm pretty sure, and still win the lowest score because if one guy shoots like a 60. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's I don't know. Like, my brain, I don't remember shit. Dude, dude that's I just remember like, uh, fucking opening up the windows trying to get the fucking teacher's nips hard. That's all I remember about <laughs> middle school and high school. It's like reminds me of our boy Doug Gim telling high school about that. golf stories from when he grew up in the Chicagoland area playing high school golf and just you know, Ryan people would shoot like 87. Right <laughs> <laughs> Something's happening with spitting chicklets. They keep I got a call from Biz yeah. saying, talk to me about the Islanders. And then I talked to him. And then I just got Ryan Whitney being like, I need I need a note. I need a note from you on the last 10 games of the New York Islanders right now. Something's happening. Mm. I'm getting I'm you know what I mean? I can feel like I I'm in the waters mean. right now. I, I got know, the shark circle. I know exactly around. what you mean. You're in the chicklets like crossing. Biz makes sense because he need might he might just like they'll talk about it. Yeah, but I guess he. I mean, what would do it on the podcast? Then? I don't know. Something's happening. Yeah. yeah, it'd be very unusual for both of them to reach out individually. Yeah, yeah on the same day, in the middle of something. Myrtle Beach, is there a better place to go on a golf trip with your buddies than Myrtle Beach? The answer is no. no. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is the golf capital of the world. If you like golf, you like having good times with your friends, if you like making memories that will last a lifetime, then you have to go to Myrtle Beach. Look, we go to a lot of different places throughout the year. Um, we talk about it. We're at one right now. But when it really comes to convenience, to having a ton of options, not just on the golf courses, but in terms of lodging, you can stay on the ocean. Um, you can stay more up in the in the trees. If you like you're up in the forest, you could play a golf course that's got replica holes. You can play a golf course that's a top 100. You can play all kinds of different stuff. They've got uh, mini golf at night, go-karts. they got everything at Myrtle Beach. So if you're going to plan a trip, top buddies golf trip destination spot in America is Myrtle Beach. We love Myrtle Beach. Yeah, we were talking the other day. I think it was me and Alex about like the spots we've been to the most this year. It's like West Palm, Scottsdale. But I think number one, at least for a couple of us in the room, is Myrtle. We took our dads there. Yep. Uh, we had a classic there. World Amateur. World, World Am Amateur. was there. We did a travel series. That was probably a couple of years ago now. But we go there all the time. And it's because we love it. It's the options for me. Just yeah. So many different ones. You can do a Pete Dye golf course. And then the next day you can do a golf course that every single one of your friends can play. The most messages I get now about golf destination trips from people on DMs, whether it's Twitter or Instagram, is like, dude, please help me build out this Myrtle Beach buddy's trip. Like, I need to know which courses to hit. And is it worth it? That's always the question. Is it actually worth it to go there instead of going to another one? And I always say, yes, here's our video series. Go watch it. I'm telling you right now, you're going to love it. The World Am... Shout out to Dan Rapport. Features more than 3,300 players every year. You'll get to play four guaranteed rounds against golfers with the same handicap. If you, uh, and if you win your flight, you'll advance to the championship and get the chance to earn the title of world champion. You can visit uh, www.barstoolworldam.com to enter to win a free entry into the 2024 Myrtle Beach 
World Am, and a five-night hotel stay. The winner will be announced in January. It's coming up soon. If you want to play in the 2024 Myrtle Beach World Am, our friends at PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com are giving away an entry into the 2024 event, which includes four rounds of golf and five nights of hotel accommodations. Go visit www.BarstoolWorldAm.com to enter. People are calling me Patrick Reed on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to the real business here. I didn't even really call me Patrick it. Reed on I the didn't internet. notice it until people pointed <laughs> out. Nobody <laughs> here's the thing that drove me fucking crazy. Number one, nobody cares what he actually shot because it was Oh, like, that's what I said. Some guy was like because in the video I say I, I got a par and I, I'm excited about it. And he's like, it's actually a double because you pulled Sam back and all that. And I was like, listen to me. I'll take a twenty. I don't give a fuck. Also I don't. Also I, I breaking news, we didn't have the cameras, well, we did the cameras in real time, but we didn't have like the replay. We weren't, no one knew that you no, did I that. No, I had no clue. Nobody knew you did that. So, no. The idea that it's we were why supposed to. calling you Patrick Reed a little bit. <laughs> I did it in silence. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. cameras were there, did you, Trent? Like, someone's like, actually, he made a seven. I was responding respond and be like, actually, like, we didn't know it was a seven. So we just tell, like, it doesn't matter. We just called it apart because it's what we thought it was. Yeah. You got to watch it in slow mo replay. Of course, you're going to see something different. Well, that's the other thing. A guy was like, <coughs> you know, you put out all these videos breaking 90s and you play by the rules. It's like, you should at least know the rule you can't ground in a bunker. It's like, I know that rule. I just didn't know that I did it on that swing. Correct. Right. Like, I had no idea. Right. Hey, you I'm were bad. pissed. You had just left one in the bunker. Right. Oh. <laughs> Hit my second bunker shot now. in four seconds. <laughs> also, it just sucks. Like, no one, or a lot of people did understand it, but there was there was a, a grotesque amount of people that didn't get the joke that our greatest shot, quote unquote, in foreplay history is a shank out of a fairway bunker that somehow rolls into the fucking, into the hole at Aaron Hills. Like, comparing that to to good goods hole out hole in one on a par four where they that's their greatest shot in good good history and our greatest shot in four play history is a fucking shank out of a bunker that he grounds a club would on. never have that's any who other we are. Yeah. that's what four play is there's go there's always going to be the really good players and there's always going to be the, the the fucking hacks we find ourselves somewhere in the middle i say at this point and we're probably going to lean more towards the hacks and the everyday fucking golfer that's not that very good sorry we're not we're not claiming to be anything else. We're going to shank balls out of bunkers and we're going to make the ball go in the hole. And we're going to yeah, go nuts when it we're goes We're going to go in. nuts when it happens. There's yeah. no like, there's no like science to it. It's just the way it fucking happened. Yeah. We got a bunch of snitches in our Instagram comments. Yeah. They're fucking. Bunch of fucking snitches. That sucked. These are the people in that hotline was still around for the PGA tour. They'd be calling up and being like, it's a great <laughs> video. Oh, um, he actually moved the ball when he hit it. When if you tweeted at Trent that he hit the sand, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. I know. I, yeah. Especially I actually got tweeted it. it like <laughs> relax. I got a lot of people defending. Who you people, to? Well, there were a lot of people who were just like, "Yeah, it was fun, man. You're out with your buddies playing golf, and you." you it's an amazingly incredible shot. Yeah, like the fact that it happened. Incredible. How did you it ride that it ridge there? that long? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. You shanked it. You hosled it out. Oh yeah, Trevor Hillman made that very clear to me. Dude, never the, seen anything like it. The edit when your face came down the thing with the ball. Yeah, it was I, so good. That made Great. me laugh out loud, and then you just went into the. Hole. You also Aaron? had kind of a funny stance where you were kind of frozen and your hand was out like this. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, like you just couldn't move. It was crazy. I can't believe we all like thought it was going to go in right off the impact. Like Riggs like go in the hole from like right when well, he Well, it was just. I know, but like, what are the odds slow. that thing fucking hits the pin and goes in? It goes in. It went in the hole. That was it's a great, great that video. Uh, shout out to the behind the scenes guys here. That was a great edit, man. Like these guys were really hitting their stride. That was an amazing edit, honestly. You the sit promo there. Was awesome. The tease is really good. Just everything was really good. You sit there and watch that video, and the way that they're getting these shots, Jonesy is getting these drone shots of every single ball that's hitting these these greens. So from like a professional level, where it's like our own version of being up in a tower, zooming in. But it's like this like zoomed in drone shot. It's unbelievable. Like there's there was one shot of me chipping up onto the green where it's like they have the shot from behind. I nip the chip. It goes up this really elevated slope onto the green. Then he's up in the air with the drone, perfectly getting that now skipping visual. Yeah, and it's like the the production that we've got. You can't miss a single shot. It's really really good. It's like so easy to watch, and it looked amazing, Aaron Hills. Aaron Hills super was green. Popping. And, yeah. I feel like that that like cloudy light is oh, really nice for filming. Yeah, it's just yeah. I was really like. I was proud of that uh, video when I watched that. That's, I mean, Me a lot of our last, I'd say our last like 15 to 20 videos have really hit like a different type of stride. Like this, the second half of this year, I don't know. Yeah. You guys are just, what do the kids say? They're in your bag. In their bag, baby. <laughs> this guy, Jared, does all this crazy shit, which I love. 
Like, did you guys see in one of the teasers where like Riggs walks by the camera and it wipes away the first, like everything to his right and then wipes away. And yes. then it's like a new scene behind him. Unbelievable. That's fucking unbelievable. About. Unbelievable. Yeah. Whose idea was the uh, the the tease? The audio tease. Kyle Tim's. I texted him. Shout out to him. Bro. I texted Brendan immediately. I said, "Whose idea was that?" And he said, "Kyle." I was like, "That's fucking incredible." So it's a really good. good idea. Just to so do the good. audio of the whole out. Oh, the audio. Oh, the audio on that. Really good. Um, <laughs> we're running long. We've got. Uh, yeah, we were we've saying we we're gonna do a half hour because we got. What do we do? Really good, what do we have? Only been an hour. Fifty-four minutes. Well, we got to talk. We're here at Abaco. Yeah. And we're here with Good Good. We this are, is gonna yeah. be a big week. Yeah. We've got a big day tomorrow. Um, we just met the guys for the first time about two hours ago there's an amazing little like tiki bar restaurant area right on the water immediately we have francis with us who's out there playing pickleball in the pitch black right now against garrett and probably matt I think. matt um he's just getting yeah they've got a bunch of games going uh we were playing cornhole with the guys with bubby and all the it was uh it was it, it, they are they are really really good guys they're really athletic, I think. Like they're like that fratty kind of like. Like I feel like I'm at like a. I feel like I'm at a frat house where guys just want to throw the pig skin and they want to play games. They want to tackle each other. They want to fucking jump in the water. Yeah. They want to. They want to wrestle each other a little bit. It's like that youthful that's energy. Youthful energy, but they're all just like really good guys. Super yeah. super polite. Very very, um, you know, into the conversation. They wanted to know a lot about us and and barstool golf and stuff and that's only the first hour being with them so i'm excited yeah we got dinner tonight um we're gonna get we're kind of gonna get right into our videos tonight and we got two full days out here at abaco island golf course ocean views it's gonna be windy it's, yeah, gonna, it's gonna be, be windy, windy. Oh. there's just a wind emoji for the next two days straight we got some good video days. ideas that we can maybe tease yeah we're doing a five on five scramble tomorrow yep yeah four play versus good good <laughs> the guys who shine we're underdogs the balls. we're underdogs we are underdogs, but you know what? I I said, imagine coming here and just not at least trying. No, we're to gonna play do them, it. Right? You roll with your squad. We're gonna I do nine. See what hole. happens? It's like Michigan playing Iowa. Right. I think we can. I want to see what. We happens. We can't just like give up. And I said that to them. I I said that to them. They know. I went up to Bubby. I said, "We gotta play you. Thing you guys is, will probably murder. us. You guys will murder us, but we have to. We have to try. We can't just come all the way out of here. If we just birdie every hole, they they can't beat us. Well, they can. They'd have to birdie every hole and maybe eagle one. But okay, but if we birdie every hole, there's a really good chance we're going to be in the match. Yeah, we'll be in the match for sure. So there's got to be a number. Hole. There's got to be a scramble number where if the players are all pretty good, and I know the good good guys are very good. Dan is very good. Frankie's playing great. Francis is pretty good. Me and Riggs, you know, we're getting there. But it's they're at a certain number. It's got to be pretty equal. Like, what is that number? We for did. A we went 17 under against the Colorado Avalanche. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We're gonna have well, five shots at it. They're gonna have five shots at it, but still. Uh, listen, we're definitely underdogs. They're really, 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 really good, and it's we just have to do it. So we're doing that. Then we're gonna do like a Ryder Cup style five v five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three holes, three holes, three holes. Ryder Cup format. We're doing captains tonight at seven p.m. We're gonna be picking. Yeah. Um, and I think it's Garrett's a captain and Riggs is a captain. That's right. I think that's right. Wow. Yeah, I gotta bring, I gotta study my notes. You do. For this they have draft. some fucking players, man. Go in there, uh, PJ Tour Pro. Quan, man, are you kidding me? Right, Quan, you got Luke pretty Quan good, and Brad Dalkey. Guys a pro, right? Yep. Dalkey and Quan are both. Like, I mean, you know this crew. Pretty guy good Steve's too. really good too. I know really, these, I mean, I know Garrett's unbelievable, guys. isn't he? Yeah, I think he's yeah. really really good. They're all good. I mean, I think Bubby's the worst one. He's like, I'm. A, he's. He's like, yeah. I, he's like, I'm all right. I hit my seven iron, 195 yards. So he's like, tomorrow will be a struggle I'm, for me. I'm just mentally preparing to get picked last. We were sitting at lunch, and I'm like, what's the highest number you guys have had in a major that you guys have done on Good Good Channel? And they like were going deep into their brain, being like, I think there may have been a 102. And we were just looking around, being like, woof. You want to see a number, boys. Good thing we're not doing that. I wish I kind of wish we were. I want to have the highest number. Like a 127. Good, like, yeah, that would be a good record to hold. Triple. It's going to be we'll fun. I'm excited. These, they're good Let's guys. Let's shock the world, you know? Sure. Imagine. I'm, everyone's going to be like, why would you even do this? You have no chance. Let's shock the world. Imagine, you know, miracles happen. Be a Why not us? Just hit golf shots. That's it. We We're putts. capable we can of getting all the hit ball good in shots. the hole. Yes. Just got to make putts. All right. We need Francis to drive it like he did in Yeah, he's in been playing pickleball, yes. chess. He played chess against Garrett. I want him to be second. on the driving range is where I want him to be. Me too. <laughs> let's get some lights on that range. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, let's go all right. Here. Uh, Bubba Watson's up next. Fantastic chat with him. I think people are going to enjoy that. He's always a great guest. Uh, so... Enjoy. We'll be back for Thursday's show. We'll have a lot to talk about. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. 
Techniques headphones deliver legendary hi-fi sound quality that you would expect only to come from Techniques. State-of-the-art, industry-leading noise canceling to shut out the noise that distracts you from staying on top of your game. We love these things. They're brand new to us. We travel all the time. We're going to take 100 flights this year. Probably take 100 flights again next year. You just need uh, you just need earphones. You need, whether you've got you've got the over-the-top ones, Frankie, that you like. I rock the earbuds. You just need them to listen to podcasts, watch something on your iPad, watch the newest movie, TV series, whatever the hell it is. You got to have uh, or live. Now you can just watch live games on planes, too. You got to have them. P- planes are loud. You got the pilot, which I know we've been uh, divided on pilots mm. on this show before. You got the pilots talking on the intercom and the whole deal. You just need good stuff, and techniques is the best. It was so funny. We had that argument about pilots. Me and you, Riggs, were on the side of like, just get us there. I don't need to hear your whole speech. Frankie was on the other side of it. And then you and I flew, Frankie. That guy was chatting. We had a rambler. <laughs> we had, the guy was this rambling. Guy, yes. This and guy me and Frankie was, was like, all right, it's a little much. <laughs> he was, he had something wrong with him. Like he was there. I could not believe he was flying this plane. It was, he couldn't finish a sentence. <laughs> he And he kept repeating himself. Like I wanted to knock on the door and be like, is everything okay in there? We got to check bro? this guy. He's like, do not knock on that door. No, Ooh. I know you can't do that. Um, it's jail time. Techniques, man, they have really uh, enhanced and changed my travel experience. I got to be honest, I've been using them a lot um, because we've been traveling a lot, and uh, I use them for the podcast now. It's really changed the way I do the podcast. I can actually hear you guys. I was using just the shittiest headphones for a year. It felt like I was using the ones that you get on Delta, the little earbuds that they would hand out. I, can't I was using you those were for the using podcast. Those nuts. That's crazy. Stunning. I just didn't have like good headphones. I didn't invest in good headphones. Just a big and time now, podcast. And you I know. Just can't hear anything. No, I couldn't hear anything. And now it's like You're a big oh technology God. guy too. You like to have good stuff. I know. I couldn't believe it. So now I've got it. I'm loving it. It's connecting to everything. Um and I just love listening to the music on them. Like the new Beatles uh release where they did like I think it's the red and the blue albums where it's like from the nineteen sixties and the nineteen seventies, they remastered everything. Oh really? Oh yeah. And uh it's twenty twenty three mixes, so they use a little bit of that AI to like separate mm. the um sounds well, and that then was they like remastered that now and then song. The right? now and then, yeah. So there's all these new remasters. That you have to listen to these new 2023 mixes. They're unbelievable. But it sounds like Ringo Starr just playing the drums right in your ear. It's so clear. And they're balancing it from the right ear to the left ear in the techniques. I was listening on the plane today. It's just, it makes a song from 1968 sound like it was produced and mixed in 2023. Awesome stuff. Really good sound quality. Do you think there'll be a point where we could put out an AI podcast of us and people won't know right what's Right now up? you could do it. Do you think we could get away with putting one yeah, out? Yeah, you can do next, it right now. Next couple months. Dude, if you can do it right get, now. If AI we can get does away voice with it right gener- now. I feel like they're rough right now, right? No, AI does voice generators so good that like it would sound just like my voice and talk just like me. <sighs> I it feel would. like journalism's going through that right now, right? With little, AI it, articles. Didn't, uh, didn't Elaine from Seinfeld go through that with a little Sports Illustrated got rolled for doing that. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. No, oh, did they? Well, they, they were they, they were, were writing articles. They were writing they, articles and then putting like a author, like a picture of an author and a name that just wasn't. I think real. Elaine Julia Dre- what what was her name? She, Julia uh, Dreyfus. She like gave a speech and it was clearly she got like wrote it on AI. Really? And I could, it was my dad was telling me about it. And I, as he was telling me about it, I was like, this sounds like a bit that she did. And then I looked it up and it was I think pretty legitimate. Wow. Where there were some parts in there, it was yeah. So point is, I think it's not quite there yet. But let's do that. Do Put that in our notes, Bush. Uh, if we're going to just put out an AI podcast at some point see and see if anybody notices. If they don't, we got a pretty shitty podcast. <laughs> if, well, if they don't too, we can't tell anybody ever. Dude, they're doing AI where it's like they'll have like Michael Jackson sing a Beatles song and it's like. Oh, I see that on TikTok all the time. Do, it's crazy. <laughs> well, they have I got the interplay. Well, they have Dude, the award winning interplay. I, I got stuck so. in a rabbit hole of Eric Cartman singing every song <laughs> under the sun. <laughs> and it's so fucking funny. <laughs> so, I, yeah, you're right. It's, it's We're getting close, maybe. Uh, no ear fatigue with techniques. This is huge. Ad- advanced fit ergonomics, so you can wear these earbuds securely and comfortably over long stretches of time, whether all day at the office, 18 holes on a flight, whatever. Shop for techniques. True wireless AZ80 earbuds at techniques.com. Four play listeners get 10% off their purchase on earbuds, headphones, and more. Just go to T E C H N I C S.com. That's techniques.com. All right, folks, we're joined by Bubba Watson of uh, the Range Goats. You got the hoodie on and the whole deal. Uh, you're in the offseason right now, so um, there's moves happening. Obviously, the John Rahm signing for you as a he captain signed? of a team. Is this, a, is this a, uh, is like an exciting time for you with all this stuff going on? It really is. Um, this is something, you know, you, you, as a kid, you, you think about these things, right? Especially a kid that plays sports. You think about 
all the things that could happen. Um, maybe, you know, being a part owner of a franchise, being part owner of some kind of sports league, sports team. And um, then you think about the trades. How would you do it? Right. We're all good on the couch, right? We're like um, this guy over here. And how do you help the Dallas Cowboys? I was a Dallas Cowboys fan. So Emmett Smith played. Was that three years in a row or something? They won three championships. So, it's, you know, you always think you can do better than the next guy when it comes to making up teams. Um, you can't, but you think you can. And so, yeah, this is fun. And the hard part is when you call your buddy and be like, hey, man, I got this idea. <laughs> and that makes it tough, right? Because we're playing together. And as a, as a captain, player, owner, that's what makes it difficult when you have those calls. Or if they have to call me and say, hey, I don't want to play with you, you know, how, whichever way it goes, right? Yeah. How, uh, I mean, obviously, as a captain of the team, how much, how much control do you have? Is it all your call? Do you kind of run it like a round table? Like, how, how much control do you exert over the whole thing? Um, I have as much control as I want. Um, obviously, the league is part of every team. Um, so they're going to, they're, they have board members as well. So there's a board that runs the whole team or, or make sure that we're not doing a dumb decision, right? Um, so you have to talk to people. Um, I come up with the ideas. You have to talk to people and um, make sure they see the same thing you're seeing. Um, and then you go from there. So I have a lot of control, you know, but then... There's obviously checks and balances to make sure it's not um, I'm not losing my mind too bad. So with most with most leagues, there's obviously like a salary cap uh, consideration, but you guys, I mean, they're paid by the league. So so is there no sort of like salary matching? Does that not matter what kind of deals are wrong with the league? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Uh, man, nobody's asked that yet. So there is. If you read the, the bylaws and the thanks in the in the uh, it's your one for the day. So um, if you read the um, bylaws and everything. Yes. So even though the league is paying the salaries, they're just, I'm getting debt, right? I have to pay um, my salary, the player salary, my GM, my workers. Uh, we're paying hotel and travel for the guys, caddies, um, social media team, you know, all those things. There's a debt being occurred, right? And so if you sold the team for a million bucks, but you're $300, you know, 300,000 in debt, you know, you, you don't, you don't get that goes away first, right? Just like any business would do, right? When you have debt. And so that's where people don't see it or don't know it. And so with some of the trades I did, um, I believe in the players, but then it also, um, checks and balances helped me in the, in the back end on the debt side, um, because we're trying to run a right business and we're trying to do the business the right way and follow the rules and league rules the right way. And, um, here we are talking to y'all. Uh, so I, it is interesting. I, you know, just objectively as a golf fan, Especially this off season stuff. I mean, we in pretty much every sport in the in the U.S. like the off seasons is just as riveting a lot of the times as the actual season for all the reasons that you're talking about right now. You know, everybody plays GM. The minute something's discussed or the minute a decision is made, everybody discusses it on their group text, having a beer with their buddies. Right? They break it down. This guy's a moron, or what a genius, or move, or these guys got fleeced. To Dan's tweet, I think, which uh, I like to give Dan as much a hard time as anybody on earth, but I think. He tweeted what a lot of people were thinking, which is you got Taylor Gooch, who's, you know, uh, the best player on, on live last year. Matt Wolf hasn't had his la uh, best last couple of years. Why did you trade for him? Is there is to Dan's original kind of point earlier? Is there um, financials with it, salary caps that you're considering? Was it just pure upside that you see in Matt? Well, like where, what was the, all the logic behind the trade? Well, first of all, Dan, that was phenomenal. You know, that's that's kind of what we're trying to do. Right. We're trying to get you to ask those questions where we can talk. Hey, so I appreciate can, you. I appreciate you coming on and doing it. It's nice that we can yeah. actually like talk about this man to man. Yeah, for sure. No, this is awesome. You know, and then and hopefully maybe I'll get some insight from y'all. And I'm like, man, can we redo those trades? But um, you know, for really, when you think about it, um, Matthew Wolf, he's 24. So let's just go there. Let's just start with a hard hitting question first. Um, Matthew Wolf is 24. He was give or take top 15 in the world at some point at you know young 20s. I mean, he's already young 20s, but um. Up and comer, um, one he was he was in that group with uh, Morikawa, Victor Hoblin, um, and him. Right? You could, I mean, it's a it's a crapshoot who was going to come out of there on top, right? Uh, so I believe in Matt. I tried to get him two years ago when I joined the league. I tried to get him last year when Brooks got him. Um, when you look at his record leading up to this year, um, he was playing really good, and then some things happened in the media. I don't know if you read about it, but it it he went the wrong way, right? Um, not not many people do good after um, situations like that. And I'm not saying I'm the the fix. 
and I'm not saying um, uh, I'm the, the, the king of making moves, but this is something I wanted to do from the start. I believe in Matt. I believe in Matt as a person. And I want to help Matt as a human being um, first and foremost. And I've told him that for a couple of years now. I've known him for about five years. Um, always text him, always support him. And so now you go back to the real golf side. The real golf side is you have no idea. There's a guy just signed $700 million deal that just had a second Tommy John surgery. I mean, dude, that's a crapshoot, right? Um, and so we're, we're banking on, he's 24. And I remember our conversation with Taylor. There's a lot of answers here, by the way. My conversation with Taylor is, he said in the next 10 years, he's going to see Brooks better golfer than me. And I 100% agree it. Even if Brooks is, we can say Brooks is better than me right now, which is, that's easy to say. Um, but next 10 years, 100%, I'll be 55 years old. If Brooks isn't better than me, he's got other issues to worry about. <laughs> and so, so from my standpoint, I'm looking at how, how is Bubba going to create this team in the, fu in the future, in the near future, 24-year-old, 45-year-old. At some point, I'm going to step back and be owner, um, wanting to be captain anymore, right? Because I'm not playing. So I'll be an owner, worker behind the scenes, trying to build the range goats. And so you know, there's a lot of steps you have to look at. Um, you can't just look at one for 27 because at the time, number one was not number one and, and uh, Wolf was ahead of him. And then the drama started happening. And again, I might create drama too. Um, we might not, we might butt heads, but that's fine. At least I'm giving it an effort. I believe in him as a golfer and I believe him as a person. Um, and then obviously the, Wolf, the, the Peter trade, uh, I just thought best friends, right? When they were good friends that play a lot of golf together, they spend a lot of time together. They went to the same um, college, a few years apart, but that's like his younger brother as well. And so uh, I felt like those two could mesh well. And again, that's, that's trying to get the puzzle pieces right. Now, hopefully in two years, you'll look at me and you're like, man, Bubba, you're the genius. Hopefully, but I can't tell you that until it happens. And now go from the financial side. Yes, there was some, there was some money that that goes off my books. There is no salary cap that I know of. We haven't got to that point yet. Um, there's no $700 million deals that I'm going to be passing out from the goats. Um, and so, you know, there was, there was some financial save, but that's, that had nothing to do with anything. I, I wanted the guys and they know that i um, talk to them. That was a long so is, answer, but so is your deal. I mean, it was interesting. You said that you're going to transition to like a, a role where you're not playing is your deal with live. So that, like, does, is that in, in the contract where once, you know, after a certain period, you're, you're no longer sort of required to play and you transition into this kind of GM slash owner role. So you, you got, let's, let's look at the captains that have, um, uh, a piece of the franchise. Um, when you, when you have a piece of the franchise, there's two contracts, right? There's a franchise contract. There's a player contract. So a lot of my stuff, you know, it's, it's, I'm an owner at some things. I'm the player at some things, right? So everybody that has a piece has a contract as both, right? Um, so that contract as a player is going to end up and I'm going to have to go to the board. I won't have a say as, as a board member. I will have to go to them and say, hey, this is what I would like to get my next contract for the range goats to pay me. Yes or no. And if they say no, then I'll try to lower the fee a little bit. <laughs> you know, you try to play that game. Um, so yes, there is a way that the, the board could kick me out. Um, the people behind the scenes could kick me out because I'm just not playing good. But at that moment, I will want to go. I mean, I think in NASCAR, I think about the owners in NASCAR sitting up there with the headset on, listening to everything. And now let's just take it a step further. Um, what happens if the owner that's not playing, we haven't had this yet because nobody's you know, stepped away. What happens when the owner now becomes like a Ryder Cup captain and he can be on the tee box and support the guys and tell them that so-and-so hit this club, so-and-so hit that club, and you're the only one that can give that advice or that, that information. And that, you know, that's a bigger picture because that's a further down the road, but also that would be all the money is team money and not an individual tournament and a team tournament. So that's what I'm saying. The bigger picture down the road, the 10-year plan of live is we're just touching the surface of it. But the people that know it, I mean, it's crazy. Well, that's that's something that I've been very public about in, in that I feel like right now it's a little muddled where the team competition is going on at the same time as the individual competition and it's going on in the background. And we love team golf. We love watching team golf. But I think team golf is the best when you've got 
you know, two guys from one team playing against two guys from another team. And it's all about the team, which is why, you know, Riggs and I talked about the the year end event, the one that was in Miami last year. Love I don't it. know if it was Miami again or in or in Saudi this year. There yeah, was. But that that was great. We love that. So is is that the vision of of more separating the individual with the team competition? Yes. At some point, the whole focus on this is is some point how the teams are going to make money is it's all I don't know what we play for, but 20, 25 million, all of that would be all team. So then let's say, let's make up a number of six teams. That'd be half. Um, so six teams would get paid each week and whatever that, how that divvies out, or it might be all 12 and the 12th place gets a little something, right? So it equals out to where everybody's getting paid a little bit off of that. And then at some point, the bonus for the, the team would be, you know, some kind of percentage of each team purse or team money that we win, right? Uh, so that's how you pay their salaries and do their things like that. Um, yes. So the long-term vision is going all team. And then you can do some fun events like that where it's two on two. It's maybe alternate shot, maybe scramble, whatever, right? Whatever, Because it's a, it's an open air. I mean, the league is starting from scratch. We can do what we want. That's the beauty of having 48 players right now. Um, the most we could ever have, I think, I think we've seen on the board is like 60. So the most we'll have is 60. So we can do whatever we want. How much influence can you have on live in general to to recruit players even from the PJ tour? Like if you said, hey, I, you know, um, like obviously when Rom comes in, I assume Rom's going to be a captain of a team. He's such a big name that that's not necessarily somebody you're going to be recruiting onto your team. He's not going to be a role player. He's John Rom. But what if like you were like Kevin Kisner is my guy. I'm I'm best friends with Kiz. I talk with Kiz. Let's go get them. Like, can you say that to Yasser, or to Greg, or to whoever, and try to just go get somebody from the PGA Tour? Um, yes, you can. I, I don't know what the rules state. Like, again, behind the scenes, we're not the deal with the live or, or not the live, but the PIF fund and PGA Tour is something I, I don't. That's above my. That's not us, right? That's not live. Live is over here, and um, so for me, yes, I ask who they're going after um, or who they want. And then I, I'm smart enough to understand, I know I've played dumb for many years, but I'm smart enough to understand who's going to help move <laughs> the needle to help grow, live. And it's not, we're, nobody's trying to take anything away from any other tour in the world. You have to have other tours. If there's 48 guys or, or 60 guys at the most, there's still going to be room for other tours. There's going to be feeders. There's going to be other things. Um, so the tours aren't going away. Nobody's ever tried to get rid of any tours. This is just a separate thing. Um, up the ante, make it more fun, make it have ownership of, um, and get the sponsors and the people behind it even more, right? Having a pull for their own team and changing people. Foreplay is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, Going easier on yourself during the tough moments or treating yourself to a day of complete rest. Remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. BetterHelp really is special. We talk a lot uh, about trying to improve yourself through uh, diet, through going yeah. to the gym, through, try, if we're talking about golf podcasts, trying to improve your golf game by going to the driving range. We don't talk enough about how you truly help improve your mental game, life, everything. Yeah, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Therapy is... The women will like you more when you're in therapy. I'll tell you that much. Is that true? Oh, yeah. You get in touch with it. Oh. You get in touch with the feelings. You get in touch with the feelings. A woman loves a, a therapy king. I'll tell you that much. There you go. That's Another nice. reason to do it. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. I'm going to have them add that to the copy. Yeah. Chicks love therapy kings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Uh, just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash four today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash four, BetterHelp.com slash four. I remember when the first schedule came out um, for Live, they they made an effort to to not um, conflict with the sort of bigger PGA Tour events, right? Like the Memorial or the you know Riviera, um, and, and the messaging at that point was, you know, we on the Live side, there's no ex rules of exclusivity. You know, if our guys wanted to play PGA Tour events and the PGA Tour would let them in it, then they would do it. 
is that still sort of the goal? Because I think golf fans are are starting to to realize that this live is not going away. And you know, how can we sort of marry the two where we have this new format that Live wants to bring, which is like you mentioned, the teams and and the rosters, and still have these sort of legacy events that golf fans have become accustomed to watching and that historically have meant something to win, right? You've won the Riviera event multiple times. I'm sure those are some of the events that you're most proud of winning in your career. As golf fans, I don't think we want to see that go away. And I think the fear is that what's happening now might lead for that to happen. Yeah, I, you know, um, short-term view, yeah, it looks like that. But long-term view, you're talking about February, first part of February, and then we're ending September 22nd this year. So you're talking about, look at all those months and all those, there's like a month off somewhere in between there. I mean, there's a lot of room to move it if you can schedule it that way. Um, John Deere makes me think of John Deere. John Deere has been a staple on the PGA Tour for however many years, right? Um, who does, my, that's my mom's favorite tournament. She just grew up on a farm in Mississippi. John Deere is a big deal to her, right? And so, Shout out to Trent Ryan, our co-host. That's his, he's from Iowa, so he's, that's his favorite tournament. There you far. go. His favorite tournament too, right? His major. Mm-hmm. Um, that's right. It's, that's right. And so when you think about that, the tournaments that, that have the sponsors behind it, um, that, that care about the town, that care about the city, that's where they're at, those tournaments are always going to be there. You throw in 30 million, 5 million, people don't, you go to John Deere because you care about it. Um, travelers, they're behind their town. They're behind their um, city. Um, the volunteers are a lot of the workers for travelers. So, you know, th- those are the big events that I see in my heart. Um, but just throwing money, going back to throwing money, J- Japan used to have, um, the Japanese tour used to be the biggest payday. So that's why Jack and all the guys went over there. Australia, um, used to be the big payday. Those are the three big tournaments. They used to go down there. Um, and then when the tour went all around the whole year, guess what? It hurts Japan. It hurts Australia. It hurts the other uh, tours around the world. And so, um, you know, throwing money at something, that's what they've been doing for years. Uh, but now we're trying to make something totally different. And I think the what people consider the big tournaments is because it was just bigger money. So the big boys showed up, right? I mean, we're all trying to make a a nice living, you know? So, um, that's why they showed up in LA. And then when you start throwing in like Phoenix this year, I don't think is a big, a big event. Last year it was a big event. Um, so they're going to change, they're going to start changing each event, which one, which sponsor pays the money. Me and Dan have talked quite a bit about this, how you guys, it feels like have not, not had the traction in the U S but globally, you guys have had, especially for such a young league in tour, Incredible traction. I think of Australia, uh, all the clips from the event this year in Australia. The fans turned out. There was the party hole. Uh, it, it looked, you know, amazing. Do you as a player, you know, ha- have say and do you give feedback sort of to live the board members of, hey, we're OK playing more globally because we like playing in those environments if we're not getting traction, it, whether it's the U.S. or wherever it might be? Are you guys okay? And do you guys give the feedback of like, we'll travel around the world if this is going to be more of a global tour because we understand that it's it's getting picked up more, it has more fans, it's more electric, whatever it might be. Yes, we do have um, we do have some input. We we tell them the information, but um, as everybody knows, where you um, where you're going to grow as an industry is, is the U.S. Right, um, the biggest market in the world when it comes to sports, when it comes to golf. Um, so that's what we're trying to get into. Um, obviously, like I said earlier, um, Australia, they love us, right? You're, you're bringing the biggest names in a small group setting. Um, and the PJ tour, you know, going all year round has hurt those three events down there in Australia. So everybody feels they got to get FedEx points, got to get FedEx points. We got to do this. We got to world ranking points and this and that. And so we, we started chasing that rabbit. Um, now that we showed up down there in Australia, they love it. Right. I mean, it was a blast. It was, it was chaos. It was a major championship. Um, and it was awesome. It was so much fun. But yeah, we're, we've talked about that. We want to, we talked about Canada. We talked about, you know, obviously Mexico already. We've talked about how can we get North America more involved. And I think, um, I think the eyes are opening. Um, when you start getting more details coming out, uh, you're going to realize that, oops, that nobody, um, nobody's trying to hurt any league or anything here. We're trying to do the right things. And, um, I think people will see it and, and appreciate it at some point. But doesn't doesn't like w- with the way that the the landscape of professional golf is right now, 
doesn't doesn't taking John Rahm away from the PGA Tour hurt the PGA Tour? I mean, isn't that just? I know you guys like ideally it wouldn't be that way, but isn't that sort of the impact that it's having? Y- yes, but your, your question your question is a good question. But again, it's all the tour has to do is say, okay, you can still play over here. I mean, he's going to play. Do you in think a couple guys would events. do it? You think guys would still play in PGA Tour events? Oh man, let me tell you, I would play in a heartbeat. Um, because I love it. I just love the game of golf. Um, you're, you're talking about, I was, I was mad this week. I was trying to get to, um, Riyadh. They're having a tournament in Riyadh, um, this week coming up and I wanted to play because I haven't played. I was like, I want to go challenge myself. I want to, I want to feel it. And, but then my kids have basketball. My wife is coaching basketball now. And then we got some Christmas plays. So then I was like, okay, I can't go. And, um, but I'm at the last minute, right? I was going to do it. And so, yeah, if there was tournaments, I call every year about the Shark Shootout. Now it's called the, uh, what is it going on right now? The Grand Thornton men's Grand and Thornton men and women tournament. Yeah, the mixed one. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I watched that yesterday, alternate shot yesterday. I mean, I love those events. I want to play in that. I support women's golf. I support PJ Tour golf. I support all of it. Um, and then the PNC is maybe next week. My son, my son was, he, he, there's two events that he puts on his calendar and that's, that's Augusta, and that's PNC, because one day he wants to play in the PNC with me. I've already asked those tournaments if I can play. As soon as we did the contract with, um, our, you know, there's a potential that we could work something out with the BJ Tour or Live could. Um, yeah, I called those tournaments right away. I said, if there's any way I can play. Um, when I play in those events, I donate the money, right? Like, I, it, it's just fun for me. Like, I just, you know, give back to the charities. Um, and so, yeah, there's ones that I want to play in. There's things that I want to do that's just fun and energetic and um so yeah, I would definitely play in, like you said, um, L.A. Play in Travelers. They do let me play in Augusta, so I'll play there still. But um, yeah, but yeah there's a few that I would love to play in. Phoenix was fun, right? Phoenix was chaos. It yeah. was Australia. Um, and so yeah, I mean, I've always played well in Phoenix. Uh, I love it. Um, I've had a blast there. Um, so yeah, I'd play in that one too if they let me. Uh, when the merger, the the deal was announced, the framework deal was announced. What was your reaction to that? Because it sounds like, sounds to me like you were relatively excited about that, and you have a very, you have a very different uh, approach and kind of personality towards the whole thing than it feels like Brooks or Phil, who are a little bit more combative. And I understand that's not really your nature; that's not really your it's just personality. But when the when the merger was announced, a were you surprised? I, I imagine you were, and, and B was it positive, negative? How'd you feel about it? Um, are, are you talking about when they announced on TV? Um, yeah, in, yeah, in, in June, y- Yasser and, and Jay. Yeah, um, it was funny. I I got a um, a text message from someone, and I said, I said, uh oh, and I said, yeah, I can talk right now. And my wife said, what is it? It was, I mean, it was whatever. I mean, we're on Central Time, so it was like seven in the morning, six thirty in the morning here. And I said, I said, yeah, I can talk right now. And I called me, and they said, hey, I'm right here with um, Yasser and Jay, and and this is what's about happening. And when he said Yasser and Jay, I was like, uh oh. I'm out of a job. Like, what? hold on a second. What are we doing here? And he said, he said, nah, it's all good stuff. I'll call you right afterwards. And I said, perfect. I said, just turn on Golf Channel and watch this. And I said, all right. So I turned it on, watched it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm just like everybody else. I had no idea. I, had, I didn't know who was talking. I had no, no clue at all. I'm just focused on my team and doing stuff. And, um, but the first thoughts that hit me are, um, how do you merge it, right? Because I know what we've talked about in our meetings that Liv's not going away. Liv is the baby. Liv is not going away. Um, but the PJ Tour can't go away. DP Tour can't go away. Asian Tour can't go away. Australian uh, Tour can't go away. You know, all these tours can't go away. It's just like baseball, AAA, AA, single A, uh, independent ball, all that. So those can't go away, right? You need all those. And it's, so you're not trying to, to grow the game of golf and to grow, grow the landscape of golf. Um, in other parts of the world that doesn't have golf yet, you have to have everybody working together in an ecosystem. And so once I heard that and realized where we're at and what we're trying to do, then yeah, I was, I was, I called, I, when they announced it that same day, I remember that same day they announced it, I watched it. I called Nathan from Travelers. He's a tournament director. And I said, Hey man, Nathan it's in two weeks. Can I play? Good tra- guy. Nate, yeah. And I said, I said, can I play, can I play uh, Travelers? They just announced this thing. Is it too soon? And um, it was two weeks away. And he called. He called the tour. And my agent called the tour. And they were like, you know you cannot play. <laughs> I said, hey, you got to <laughs> ask. You can't, you can't go without asking. <laughs> so it, it was very surprising. But like I said, we, we're, 
we're short term views, right? We got to look at the the whole project here and where is it going um, and what is the goals and and I know what the goals are from from the other side. And I know what the goals are from Liv's side. I know what my goals are, and we're trying to make all these things work um, to the benefit of everybody. Uh, I got to ask you about the um, the golf ball rollback decision. You obviously your whole career, especially when you came out there slinging it, big hitter with the driver, the pink driver, the lefty. Bobo is just kind of a brand. I think I've seen you hit pitching wedge into thirteen at Augusta before, and now they're gonna you know roll the golf ball back. They came out with this. It's going to be about five percent. We've had incredibly um, contrasting opinions from the manufacturers to Roy McIlroy coming out. Um, we've kind of debated it, gone back and forth ourselves on our show as you two time masters champ, captain of the range goats, uh, big hitter for years and years and years. What do you, what do you think about the whole thing? Well, first of all, in 2014, I hit sand wedge into 13 on sand Sunday and, and one roll that ball back. Unreal. Um, <laughs> no, unreal. um, truthfully, I, I don't see what, it makes me laugh because common sense says you have a big hitter. Let's just say Bryson, right? Bryson is trying to hit the ball far, and he does. He's really good at it. But you move him back 5%, everybody else is going back 5%. Like it, it, you're still going to have Bryson as the longest. The shortest is still going to be the shortest. It's not like he's getting the regular ball and everybody else is getting the other ball. Like You're still going to have – so instead of driving here, you're going to go backwards to here. Everybody is a group. And then when you look at from USGA standpoint and major standpoint, all the majors around the, around the world, um, what are your main sponsors on commercialism? Is, is the golf ball manufacturers, um, golf manufacturers. And now you're, gonna, you're asking them to throw away all their technology they've used and built and spent money on to form a ball for the public. Remember, the public is buying the product. Most pros get it for free. And so you're, now you're asking them to revamp all their stuff just for pros. And golf courses have already built new tees, so they've spent bunches of money um, designing, doing. I, I just, why, why spend money? Like, I just don't get it. Like, just, just let what we have have. There's, football's not changing their field. Uh, basketball's not changing. They, the only thing they've added in, the, what, the last 50 years is three-point line. Um, and that was to make it more scorable, right? Not because it, they were taken away. Um, so I don't understand why we have to be mad at good golfers shooting low scores or hitting the ball miles. Yeah. I, I just, I want to go back to the, just one thing. Cause I, I, you know, I, I hear you saying about, you know, we want to grow, we want to coexist. I, I think there is a part of the, the golfing public, the golf fans right now who are, who are upset about how everything's going down, not necessarily because live, but because the best players in the world are split up right now. What's, what's your reaction to, to people who say that this is bad for the game, what's happening right now? Again, it's bad for the game. What, what, what is, I, you know, I don't, I, I come back with the question, what's bad for the game? Um, Not having know, the best players competing against each other, you know, more than four times a year. Right. But John Deere, one guy might show up. Zach Johnson, when he was at his heyday, he plays at John Deere every year, right? So when he was ranked really high, he would show up. Steve Stricker, you know, I'm, I'm just going off people that I remember always playing there. Jerry Kelly. Like there's a handful of people that you know that's played there. So Phoenix, not all the superstars play in Phoenix. Now they did last year, but that's a different reason. And you, when you, so we didn't have the superstars playing every week. LA was a different event, right? It's a beautiful golf course. It's a hard golf course with no rough, right? Like it freaks you out for some reason. And so that's a different animal too, right? It was a bigger LA. LA brings out the stars in any sport. You know, brings out celebrities in any sport. LA just does that, right? So with what you're asking, you're asking something that hasn't been done anyway. Mm -hmm. Now the traveling circus of Live is has bigger names going. That's the beauty of it, right? And yes, I threw myself as a bigger name. But at some point, I'm going to be the bigger name with a headset, right? Um, it just, like I said, the bigger viewpoint. Now you, now take game of golf. Now let's let's jump ships a little bit here. You said something about growing the game. Um, Dubai. Dubai didn't have golf what? I mean, Dubai wasn't Dubai 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Uh, it takes time to make change. And what I know, I've been to, I've been around the league now a couple of years. I've been around involved in this. This has been started back in 2013 when this league wanted to start. I mean, this has been, we've been dealing with this for years and it finally came true. Um, I know that when I go to Saudi Arabia, um, women 
play for free. Um, junior golfers, uh, women get free clubs. Junior golfers, they got 30 golf courses in the works. They're showing a sport that that teaches you um, many different traits, um, many different cultures can get involved and can support one another because of the game of golf. Um, so there's a different landscape that, you know, you're fo- if you focus on one aspect of it, you're, you're limiting what you're doing. Um, and that's the bigger picture. Um, you're talking about changing a landscape. Um, look at China. You know, the PJ Tour went to China a few years ago because they, want, they know that China, if you get part of that, 2% of that population, that changes the population. game of golf. Right, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that's where, that's their vision. And they went there. Uh, then some stuff happened um, and it didn't work out. Um, sponsor wise and all these things. But so that's what I'm saying. You have to look at, you can't focus on or try to dictate who's, who's right and who's wrong or who's better and who's worse. You have to focus on what are you truly, truly doing in the game of golf? Um, and how, how does that look? And if you're just focused on, I want to see the best players, then that's, that's, you know, you got to, let's build it and let's get the PJ tour to let us play in a couple of events over there um, and do those things. And then it all, then it all works out better. And I, it is an interesting thought experiment because I saw I saw someone tweet this. I don't even know who it was, and they were like, "What would happen if the PGA Tour tomorrow just said like, okay, the live guys can play in our events?" I'm like, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> yes, but a year ago, PGA Tour said um, a lot of things, and then a year now, this year, a year later, they say different things. So, yeah, I mean, at some point, maybe, maybe, you know. I know of a fund that has a lot of money that can make these high-end events in the PGA Tour real fast, and they add us to them. Or what, what, let's go the other route. What if they give two teams to the PGA Tour, and the PGA Tour changes who those four people are each week, and they play on live, and you know, vice versa, right? They come and make a team, two PGA Tour teams, and then go back, right? Um, and they own those. Te- then the PGA Tour owns those teams. So now you go into the profit business instead of the nonprofit. Um, that's what I'm saying. There's a billion ways you can look at this and go with this. Short term view, yeah, everybody's going to be upset. Everybody's going to be negative. But then think about where we were a year ago and where we are now. Um, it's a little different when you start reading the stuff that's truly happening behind the scenes. It is an interesting point that the best players uh, don't all show up to every PGA Tour event. I mean, they're they they've in response to live and what you guys have done. The PGA Tour has tried to make that happen by creating elevated events um that pretty much and and really like literally forcing guys to go and they get you know they were able to miss one and then rory missed more than one and he's had to go through the whole deal and got criticized for it so it is a very good point that up until last year with the elevated events you know even like bay hill or the honda classic or whatever like there were always multiple people in the top 10 that just aren't in the field um and so we kind of you know, I I live here in, in Phoenix and like people were bummed out that John Rahm, you know, is not going to be playing in the Phoenix Open now. But hearing you kind of talk, that's a little bit of a counterpoint where you're like, well, yeah, but now the folks down in Australia are going to be jacked up that John Rahm's coming and he hasn't come, you know, in however many years. So um, so it is an interesting point that, you know, I, a lot of people, the sentiment among my friends and, every, and my my buddies on my golf group decks is that like when Rahm went, it was that, oh, this kind of sucks because we're only going to see the best players playing against each other four times a year. But for whatever reason, I do, I do think you're right in a degree that we've sort of overlooked how often the best players come together and play because it's, it's never really been that often where all, and and when they did with the world golf championships, people, those events weren't the big events. Right. I mean, like that was a thing for a while. It was just like, they were soulless. They were soulless. They were just like boring. And yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Guys, I would like to tell you about some new performance outerwear I've been loving from our friends over at Peter Millar. When the temperatures drop, depending on Peter Millar's innovative lineup of jackets and vests to keep me performing my best for those cool weather rounds, Peter Millar uses revolutionary performance fabrics that provide lightweight weather resistance along with the perfect amount of warmth without overheating. Each design is ergonomically constructed to move with your swing on the course or your stride on the go. We love outerwear season on this yeah. show. This is just I'm our wearing time. a full-blown Peter Miller outfit right now. To thrive. I yeah. Pants, 
most comfortable pants of all time these little sweatpants joggers Ooh. Mm-hmm. this t-shirt you know if you notice this athletic fit t-shirt on me i saw it i saw so it. comfy i like the little um sleek peter millar on the on the top yeah. right on your shoulder up there isn't that cool yeah, i've got the hoodie good. on that looks really good i've yeah, got a hoodie so on i love this little this new little uh circle i noticed that today yeah. it's probably like their there. best hoodie they have because yeah. the logo is phenomenal the yeah. little logo if i'm peter millar i want to toss that thing on more things they gotta I roll agree. with this one because a lot of times they just they'll send us things or we'll see them in pro shops where it's like you can't even find the logo. Yeah. It'll just be like a plain hoodie. And everyone, like, you know the hoodie just because of the material. Like, oh, that's the Peter Millar Lava Wash hoodie. You just know. But I like that logo so oh, like much. Right. They kind of let it's the... Understated. They let the pro shops do the logo. They let us... Uh, we do the B Cross T logo like Riggs has Bang. on there. They should start using their logo a little bit more. I was walking through the Islanders... Um, Pro Shop. I always bring it back to the Islands, but I was walking walk to the Islands Pro Shop. It's called Isles Labs, and uh, it's an amazing, like, 21st century type pro Where shop. Where even is that? It's, like, right when you walk in upstairs to the left. At UBS. At UBS. Gotcha. And you, there's no checkout. You throw everything in a bin, oh, and it just it knows how it? much. You take everything that you have. Those are wild. You toss it into a bin, and you just leave. And it's just, like, you tap, obviously. Sometimes the airports have those. Yes. Like yep. that, this is you... even crazier. Like, the airport one, you have to put it on the thing, and it scans it. Uh, Are you noticing that? No, I've seen ones where you just walk, walk out. in, walk out. Oh, that's the Amazon ones. Yeah, yeah Amazon. You go to the Amazon, Amazon store. They have one in New York City. That's what you I was thinking. You walk into the Amazon store. You have to you have to use an app, you have to use your um, account to get into the building. And then once you just take things off the shelves, you just leave, and it just Whoa. builds your Amazon account. That's Nuts. That we're anyway, too far, at the Isles Labs, I'm walking through and I see this hoodie. It had spotlights on it. Blue Islanders hoodie. I'm like, is that the lava wash? I, I couldn't believe it. No right? way. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. Peter Millar logo on the bottom. I'm like, that's fucking lava wash. That's awesome. Islanders, this little mini <laughs> Islander left left nipple logo. Wow. Like, immediately texted Hannah. I'm like, if I don't have this for Christmas, you're insane. <laughs> you didn't buy it right then and there. I would have bought it. I right did then. not. Well, I just she's been asking me what I want. I'm like, Isles Labs. Right when you walk in to the right. You better be at UBS getting this thing because I want it. I want that for Christmas. Nice. Uh, whether you're looking for a bold statement piece or keeping it classic, the new lineup of Crown Sport Outerwear has you covered. Head on over to PeterMillar.com. Trust me, go to their website. It's very fun to go to their website. They have so many good items on there. Head on over to PeterMillar.com to explore the newest Crown Sport Outerwear from Peter Millar, the official outfitter, by the way, of our close personal friends, the USGA. Do you, uh, I, again, I don't know that this is like, it's more of a Phil Brooks kind of take, but do you feel a little bit like you're over, over the last six months, a little bit like, see guys, like we were right because you guys got a lot of shit a year and a half ago, um, for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. I mean, right. We're right. I'm not saying we're right at all. We took a chance. Um, you know, some people say pioneers, but I just say we took a chance, right? Um, we had to, we had to weigh it out. And I know people want to talk about money all the time. I mean, you just said Rory. Rory decided what's best for him is not playing those elevated events. And he got dot pay. But the pay is not really what you're focused on. I took a chance because I'm getting older. I want to be part of a franchise. And why would I want to miss out? I thought the risk of going, um, I would be upset that this thing succeeded and I wasn't a part of it. Um, because I want to be part of a team. As I get older... Do I want to chase my golf ball around at the Champions Tour or do I want to have a headset on and maybe have an impact on a young man's life? And here we are talking to you. This whole thing started with a young man's life and trying to help him off the course, be who he wants to be and who he, who he truly strives to be. Um, so that's, that's my opportunity that I would have missed if I would have just stayed on the everyday, same thing, same broadcast, same golf courses, same hotels, same food, same restaurants. You know, that's, that's what I would have missed. Now I've already got my first opportunity to try to impact a, a 24-year-old grown man. Yeah, it is interesting that I, I think we do overlook that there are other factors. Like I, I still hold that I think guys are going for money. Like that's the biggest thing. But you could go for money and also be excited about other parts of it, which I think we probably don't give you guys enough credit for. Because yeah, like if it sucked, they wouldn't go even if they were getting paid a lot of money. Right, that's what I'm saying. If someone's like, yeah. we'll pay you. A- Two hundred million dollars. You have to sit in prison for twenty years. You'd be like, "Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. <laughs> that stinks." You know? Yes, but it, somebody will still go. <laughs> Just saying. Yes, there's somebody right, would go but for you, sure. But you, you got to remember. Let's so let's take it from this standpoint. Um, John Rahm, right? John Rahm is a is a great champion, great needle mover in the game of golf. He's a great dude, um, great family man. He is making money 
from the tour, the the, the PIP or whatever it is. He's making money from his sponsors, his blah, 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 right? So it's not, to him, it's null and void. It, there's a pile here, a pile there, right? It's, it's, it equals out. So just because you're, you're looking at what they say and nobody knows the truth, right? Some people do, but me and you don't know, right? The internet's not always right, just saying. And so when you look at that, um, when I went, I have, I mean, I signed a lifetime deal with Ping, right? So I had money. I had other sponsors. I have, I have a watch sponsor. I have a clothing sponsor. So I had money, right? So the money is null and void. They're not just throwing out money randomly. There's actually a formula why so-and-so gets this. You know, you have right. this many years on your contract. So it's not like Rom is just getting like $500 million as a check. No. And then there is some guys on the tour. There is some guys on the tour that just came up with random numbers and the league's like, who are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> and so, and I, and I'm not going to, I would never call those people out. Um, but there are some random numbers and you're just like, you haven't even made that much in your career. Like, what are you, uh, hold on a second. Like, I know a sponsor is not sponsoring you for that much. So there is actually a formula. These are smart businessmen. This fund has made it because they're smart at what they do. They own almost a piece of every company that's ever been built in the United States, right? They have a formula how they invest their money. Um, and so it's not just some made up number. You know, it's an actual real number for a reason. And they know the jump ship. So it might, they might have added, you know, 5%. They might have added 2% depending on who you are. They might have added half a percent for me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, there's a there's a formula out there um, that we have behind the scenes. It's not like just some here's a here's a check. You know, it's just it's a real number for a reason. It's interesting to hear how into the GM aspect of it, the whole thing you are. And when you when you first started last year, you were a non playing captain because you were injured. Do you feel like you're you're so into it because that's kind of how you entered it? Um, it's just my mindset. You know, again, when I did interviews, I mean, I was scared to death of the world. I mean, 2006. I was getting mad on the golf course. I was doing all these things because I didn't know how to act cameras. So I played, then I switched to playing a dumb character. Um, and I just, I want to do the business side now, right? I want to show the world that I actually, there's a reasons behind my, my things that I do. You know, I started a candy shop with, with a group of people, uh, part of a baseball team, have a little driving range. Um, you know, there's business sides that I want to do that I enjoy. Um, think about the Think about the old champions that have built golf courses or they've built yeah. a, a clothing brand because they they knew golf wasn't going to be their livelihood when they're 50, 60, whatever. So they had to do other things or they wanted to, not had to, they wanted to do other things. Um, and that's where I'm at. And this is an opportunity of a lifetime to have a franchise. I'd rather fail at trying to be the make a franchise than sitting on the sideline going, man, what if? I'd rather take so, the chance. So are you saying that you play, You basically played dumb because it was just easier that way with the media? Okay, that's one thing. The second thing, I, I got to tell you, that video of you telling Steve Elkington that veterans can kiss my ass is one of the best videos I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> please, please don't let my son ever see that. Um, <laughs> it's an unbelievable video. You are wearing a visor in these, in these, and you're so fed up, and you turn to him and you go, veterans can kiss my ass. <laughs> so... I, just for the record, man, not to bring up old stuff, because I really, I actually really do like Steve Elkington. I know that's funny <laughs> to say. Even though he wears brown, I really do like him. And um, because I've learned a lot from him, I remember watching him, right? Like, that's Steve Elkington. I mean, him and Norman. Um, and so, yeah, I was just mad. I kept hearing all these rumors about playing with him is very difficult and um, all these things. And, and they were right. <laughs> they weren't rumors. They were right. It was very difficult. Um, but... <laughs> I was I was missing the cut. I shot five under on the back nine after that outburst on uh, number ten, and I apologized till I was red in the face. Like I'm just I'm sorry, man. Like I didn't mean to do it. I didn't want to do it. That's not who I want to be. Um, I had to learn from my mistakes. Um, but yeah, I shot five under after that, so I was happy. I made the cut after after doing that. Had to release it, <laughs> you know, and then had to play better. Yeah, Elkington, great podcast guest, and uh, and you are too. I mean, every time we have Bubba, every time you're on, it's just. I think it's your third, fourth, fifth time on the show, but you're always a great guest. You're always very insightful. It comes from, you know, a very uh, impressive place that you're a two-time Masters champion. So everything you kind of say carries a lot of weight. But, um, but man, getting into it, you know, going back and forth with, with us on Twitter and being like, yeah, I'm happy to, to jump on and discuss it. It's, uh, it's very cool for the golf world. This is a side of sort of live 
This, well, actually, this is the second range goat that we've had on the show. We had Thomas Peters on the show. We're but, a range goat podcast. I know. We're just a, a range <laughs> goat show. That's what we are. But uh, Keurig's Where's my merch? Inside, Where's my merch? In, <laughs> I know. The inside baseball of Liv is a different side of it that we haven't really talked about or heard much about. So I, I think people really do find it very interesting. Yeah. And, you know, and going back to it, it's, it's, this is just, um, man, it's so fun and, and it's so freeing. And when I realized, when I say playing dumb, playing dumb is a, you know, it's just being, it's being dumb. Right. So truthfully, <laughs> when I hit my low point, um, you know, wrote a book about it, you should check it out. So I wrote a book <laughs> about, um, my downfalls, right? The things, the, the FedEx cut points, the, the writer cut points, uh, world rankings, uh, trying to make the Olympics. Um, you know, Olympics was never in my eyesight. Franchises were never in my eyesight. And now I'm an Olympian. Now I own a franchise. So here we are. So, but I was, you hide. And when I say you, I mean me, because I can't tell you what anybody else does, but I hide behind certain things, right? You don't want the media to blast you. The media blasted me a few times where I thought it was unfair. Was it unfair? I don't know, but me personally thought it was. And, and so I just want to tell the truth now. I, want, I don't want to sugarcoat stuff. I don't want to say I, had, I didn't have my best day. I want to tell you the truth, what, what happened to me throughout my day or throughout my week or throughout my life. And it's freeing to me to say that. And so talking to y'all or talking to anybody... I want them to kind of get the insights. They can't have all the Mostly information. Mostly talking to us. Right, exactly. You guys. So, because I don't, have, nobody else wants to be on their podcast. So, um, and so I want y'all to know, and I want your, your followers and your fans to know, like there's some other insights behind the scenes that, that we haven't, the media doesn't know and they, they don't need to know. We don't need to know the insights of NFL. We just want our team to win, right? My fantasy team's going on right now and I can't even watch it because I'm talking <laughs> to y'all. I know. And so, you know, I, I want to know what trades in my fantasy have happened um, so, you know, I, that's where I'm at in my life now. I just want to just give it to you and give it to you straight. And if you like it, great. If you don't, I'm sorry, but let's, we can hash it out and talk about it and tell you where I'm coming from my own opinion. And that really has been free. And since I wrote the book about my life, that's really where I'm at now. So it's really not playing smarter or dumber. It's just being 100% honest instead of like 98% honest. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you mentioned the Ryder cup. I'll never forget in 2010, when you lost in that playoff at Whistling Straits and you're doing your interview and you were like, yeah, I mean, losing's a bummer, but I really want to get on that Ryder Cup team. And you just kind of said in that interview, I think you were literally like on the 18th green. They're like, yeah, bummer, you came up just short. You were like, yeah, I mean, I did, but I think I'll get on the Ryder Cup team now, which is awesome. Yeah, I remember that interview. Um, I told, um, it was Michael Collins, um, yeah. and Michael Collins wanted to interview me, and I said, no. I said, until you tell me if I'm on the Ryder Cup, I will not do an interview. And he laughed, and I was like, and I just sat there. And he goes, can somebody tell me if he's? And um, I finished, I think I finished, I went all the way up to third because it doubled, doubled the points at majors. Um, so I went all the way up from 18th to third, I think, maybe, maybe 16th to third. Um, so, yeah. I mean, but that's, you know, my dad was still alive. My dad was close to passing away at that moment. He was, he was an Army Green Beret Special Forces captain, uh, was in Vietnam, had shrapnel on his back. Uh, so he's. You know, he's fought for our country, he's fought for uh, a lot of things. And um, for me to have the patch of the United States logo flag on me at the Ryder Cup, my first ever Ryder Cup, never thought I would ever get there. You dream about it, but you never thought. So, yeah, it meant a lot to me. Forget second place. I care. Again, it, I was more happy about a tournament that don't pay you than I was a tournament that paid me, right? Because that's what I wanted to get to. That's what I wanted to do that for my dad so he could see it before he passed away, knowing that he was going to pass away pretty soon. Yeah, that always stuck out to me, uh, that interview. I, I, I always love that moment. And uh, yeah, you are. You're great whenever you come on the show. Uh, very, uh, you know, raw and real and candid and honest. And uh, and we appreciate the time as always. We'll, thank uh, you. We're and thank you for doing it. We're because I, like my original tweet was not super positive. I always appreciate <laughs> when people want to talk about things. And because I think that, you know, it's one thing to try to communicate with 280 characters. It's another, you know, we've been talking for 45 minutes and I think we understand each other a lot better. So thank you for coming on. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, man. Anytime. This is, this is awesome. And it, it gets, it gets my opinions out. Again, it's all my opinions, right? And your opinions. And, and we just, we do it friendly and talk about it and we hug it out. We can't hug it out now, yeah. but when we're by each other, we'll hug it out. Yeah. I'll see Virtual you again soon. I'm sure we'll <laughs> hug it out. Exactly. All right, Bubba. Thanks guys. 